Oh boy, we are back. Good evening, good afternoon, good morning. You could be anywhere in the world watching this. Welcome to the second meet of Victorian Milers Club. Record-breaking meet as well. I think there are about 80 or 90 people over their previous record, so it's going to be an absolute cracker. And I'm joined here by the best. He's just come down from this <laughs> beautiful wedding. It is the one, it is the only Mick Messini. Mick, good evening. Good evening, Mitch. Um, evening for us if you're here yes. at, in Melbourne area, Box Hill area, um, which I was expecting better weather for the, for the night tonight. Yeah. I don't know about you coming all the way down from Mackay, but... Well, yeah, I was ambitious. Yeah, <laughs> it was a long flight to get here, but, you know, this is Melbourne, isn't it? It's really turned on its classic weather. It's, um, yeah, humid out there. It's not too windy, though, so if the if the rain drops a little bit, it um, might still be a nice night for fast times. Well, we are at Box Hill, so Home naturally babies. there's going to be fast times. Do you know how many people? There's about, I don't know how many people. Let's call it 500 people. I think it was, yeah, 590 odd. 580 PBs them. will come out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There will be 10 people, myself one of them, who do not run a PB tonight. Everybody and else is going to cash in. As we've got our first race on the track, have a look at this. It is a loaded night. Some of the best kits I've ever seen as well. One man out here is rocking the greatest purple kit I've ever seen on an athletics track. And we're going to kick it off with the 800s. And I got to remember, they can't hear me. Nick Wall is doing the in-ground, in I suppose you call it, on-track commentary. So we can just keep rambling on. <laughs> if, you haven't, if you haven't fixed yourself a coffee... Um, well, I'll do it now, or you could do it in about three hours because yeah. we've got about <laughs> four and a half hours of commentary you got coming your way. I think the last races are about um, 10 to 10 later on, pretty much for the time that you're going to be um, hitting the track later on, Mitch. Oh, boy. It's nerve-wracking. I almost don't want to think that far ahead, although I've had people calling me nonstop all afternoon, questioning me. As we get our first of our events underway, it is the men's 800 metres, the M800 metres. We'll see who's able to get out there quickly. I reckon the unattached athlete might be Andrew Fure in that purple kit. And he's just spaced how, himself out early. How is the kit? Love oh, it. Incredible. The combination of it all is just, you can't teach that sort of etiquette. 30 seconds through the first 200 metres of this 800. So he's not messing around. He's out there to try and prove a point. He has gapped himself. I'm going to say... 40 metres, maybe, through the first 250. So certainly no signs of slowing down as he enters the home straight for the second last time. And the rest of this field is pretty nicely strung out. Yeah, a few people made the journey from the Gippsland region in the Wellington kit and uh, someone else from Collingwood. And I think we've got Spicer Track Club athlete, if Sam, Coach Sam, is watching from home. Oh, boy, he will be. Look at this bell. Seven, 65 seconds through the first lap. So certainly not wasting any time behind him here is going to be Andre Fure. Right behind him is also Robert Noes. But our man out in front with 300 metres to go is not slowing down. Could it be Lenny Gray, potentially? We'll try and get a read on his hip number there. No, I think it's Bo Lin. Bo Lin from the Mad Rabbit crew. The Mad Rabbits. Not Run Rabbit. Not Run Rabbit. Very similar. We're, we're not that mad at Run Rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> Very similar, though. So it's Bo Lin. He is mad. There. The madman out he's, the front of the he's field. He's led from 50 metres, about 100 metres into the race, <laughs> and he's held that 50-metre lead all the way through. And the athlete in the Kilo Little Aps kit, uh, it's Andre Fure, I think, the unattached athlete, um, charging his way into second place. So we've got a clear... First clear, second, and then the flood of athletes behind. But Bo, Bo Lin, 800 metres in the best kit that, well, best kit we've seen all night. But I think it's going to be the best kit that we'll see. Best. That's definitely a benchmark that we've said early. That's kit the of the night. In Milers Club history. I think so. So Bo Lin's going to crash the tape. Watch the clock. 2.21 on the clock. So Bo Lin just starts it with a little bit of authority in his Fure now. And we said the third place would be hard to figure out. And look at this. It's a flurry of kicks. And coming down is Canavan. Tommy Canavan takes third place. So he gets over the top of our Spicer Track Club athlete. And I reckon Sam is watching. And I think that was Finn Meehan in fourth position. But it was Bo Lin in this men's M800 metres to take it out. as our final competitor here in Will McCombie. He's going to come down and crash the tape. Just a tick over 2 minutes and 50 for this, the men's M800 metres. M800 metres. That is a lot of letters of the alphabet. Let me just say that. And sorry, we have one more. K 
coming in to crash the tape to finish it off here. I believe it's Austin, mate. And he just goes 3-11 to finish it off. And your eyes don't deceive you. That is none other than Tim Crosby <laughs> in the South Melbourne kit. Commentator, event organiser, slash athlete. You know what he told me the other day? He's So Tim's been running Milers Club, you know, for donkeys. Running it or running it? Well, this is his first <laughs> time ever competing at no his own way. Milers. First time ever. Yep. It's probably because you see him put on the uh, South Melbourne kit for cross country yeah. here and there. <laughs> so he organises slash runs... Uh, Cross country, but look at those yeah, run throughs. There you go. So, Tim Crosby, look at that. The camera loves him. Don't talk too much smack because uh, this will be the camera following yeah. you in the men's <laughs> F race later this evening, Mitch. Oh, they were yes. like hanging around. What time? Um, what time we got? Got 9.03 pm. So, um, our co commentator and Mitch Dyer is going to be putting on the spikes for the first time in college days. Yeah, five years. First Since time in five I've been years. On the <laughs> Since you've been on Athletics Track for anything but an interview. Oh, oh that's actually <laughs> so scary. Oh, I can't wait. Can't wait for the interview afterwards. Oh, boy. Yeah, I hope you got your questions ready. Yeah, yeah. Got them all ready. I'll be yep. giving you a, an honest, <laughs> hard-hitting response. <laughs> Let me tell you. An honest appraisal of one's own performance. <laughs> it's like the end of season review. <laughs> yeah. Actually, for the one race just, that you've yeah. done. <laughs> okay, Mish. Break it down for me. You've got one race. Well, that's me, it. I How's it going? good from the start. So our men's L800 metres, we have 12 competitors in this. Look at that, we don't have to, unfortunately for you guys, we don't get to guess the clubs anymore. We, <laughs> it's all written out. Lockie's too good at his job. Just when we were getting to a sort of standard level, not good, yeah. but an average level of um, guessing club abbreviations with the actual name. Sure of getting the messages from Glenn Turner mid, uh, yeah. <laughs> mid, uh, that, mid commentary. Uh, that's wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Former CEO of um, Athletics Victoria. God, he was handy. <laughs> Glenn, if you're watching. It's like, who's WTN? Ah, Williamstown. Yeah. Now we know the word, Williamstown. Uh, not what Sonia. <laughs> so we're underway here in the men's L800 metres. And in lane number two, keep your eyes fixated on the man in the red and the white, in Tim Crosby. He's going to opt to... Just give a little bit of room to his competitors up in front. Don't mind that. He's He did run a 464 on the weekend. So he's got some wheels as they start to space themselves out. It's going to be our man from Glenn Huntley. I think Jasper McKinna is going to try and get to that rail early and set the pace. Just when you're watching this race as well, remember, Tim Crosby does the seating. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so he could have put himself in, so the, do in the previous not race. Anything mean. Yeah. It's. Uh, well, yeah, he, yeah. Don't comment anything mean, but you know, he's he's put himself where he thinks he should be. Yeah. So he's well, he's sort of comfortably put himself at the back of this race. He wants to be dragged along. This is the most honest appraisal. You yeah. Can get. This is the most consistent evaluation or, you could get. Or he's sandbagging, and he yeah. knows that he's going to mow his way <laughs> down the go, field. Bang. Doesn't want to make it too obvious. Well, he's going to have to do a fair bit of work to get around Seb Bell Bartles on the outside of the shoulder there. But right now, coming through to get the bell, leading it. Joshua Lindman from Old Scotch in the red and blue kit. We'll have a look around the outside. I think it's Casey Cardinia. And look at that. He just waited his time. Oh, my goodness. He's gone from five metres back to ten in front. <laughs> he's done he's a bow in. Yeah. James said, Denton. Come and get it. Denton from Casey Cardinia goes bang. He's going to well and truly negative split this two-lap event. Wow, we And Isaac Furo, the uh, brother of our second place athlete from the previous race, is charging, charging after Denton, the athlete in the black and white kilo uniform. Well, let me just say, Mick, I reckon he's going to get him. I reckon Denton spent his bickies Mick. very early. It's a brave move. But if you haven't seen... Uh, the Where's Wally kid of the South Melbourne in Tim Crosby <laughs> making his way through the field. As we said, he's not going to win the thing, but he's, um, he's, he's definitely gonna go not going to come last. He's seated himself well right in the middle of that field. He's as we look at Furor charging towards Denton, but he might just run out of time. Wow, what a finish from Denton to hold on there. He looked all but done with 100 metres to go, but he holds on. And Furo now is going to come through for a brave second. In third place is going to be Seb Bell Bartles. As we see the rest of the field make their way through. And Tim Crosby, there he is. Crash it. 2.26 for Tim Crosby. The man of Athletics Victoria, the voice of Athletics Victoria, Tim Crosby. That's a good finish. I could be happy with that. Pretty strong. It's it's um, Those short distances aren't uneasy if no. you're a distance runner. 
have not been on track for a while. As you said, he ran 64, um, yeah, 400. 400. That's pretty, pretty, pretty impressive. You know what else is impressive? He spiked up. I was just, yeah. I was just he looking at his feet and going, hey, God, is he wearing spikes? He spiked up. I'm not even spiking up. <laughs> Aren't you? Nah, super shoes. Yeah. Got to be. I made that mistake uh, this time. Ooh, was it last year or two? I think it was two no, years ago. Was, Could have been last year. Last year. Yeah, I think it was last I year. Was and I just and I literally had both my shoes. I had my spikes and I had my super shoes. I was doing run throughs over where we see near the high jump mat, and I did run throughs in both. And I was like, Nah, you got to <laughs> if your spikes are for the track. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, you just feel light, you feel quick. Oh, you went the other way. And I went spikes, and 200 meters to go, I just felt my calf. Straight ping. Yeah. Oh, and I sort of made the last 200, but, like, I was, wasn't was running well. Was that a 3K? It was well? a 3K, yeah. Oh. And I finished okay. Like, I was happy with my run, but, yeah, just wait. Like, that's what annoys me. I run, you know, 2.85 yeah. kilometers, good. feeling good, and then all of a sudden, last 150 meters, it goes Guys. bang. That's got to happen too. Yeah, the worst thing is I did it a month ago on a run. I ran 19Ks. And the run, it was, I was one kilometre back away from the car park. Was this the relay? No, it wasn't. Oh, it wasn't. God. The relay I was fine for, thank you got God. the relay. Yeah, well, to part of the winning team. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, as long as you can contribute, <laughs> that's the most important yeah, thing. Yeah, exactly. As long as you're a contributing member. Yeah, yeah. You're putting demons in my head right now about potentially 200 metres to go. I'm going to feel like... No, but you're wearing super shoes, so you'll be sweet. Second time ever wearing them. Which still makes me nervous, but anyway. So we have our first of our women's 800 on the track now. See that Spicer Track Club shirt right in front of us there? It's the women's H 800 metres. Hold on. Gemma Spicer of the Spicer Track Club. Could be interesting. Any relation? Yeah. Sam Spicer, Sam right, in, right in if, you, <laughs> if you're watching. Listening. Sam, let us know. Did text me the other day asking if we were going to be on the mic. You better believe Mick and I will be calling it home. Our first women's 800 metres. Unsteady on the line. On your mark. So 13 competitors listed. I think we've, we've had one. No, nope, she's back in her lane now. Lena, Lena Bright was ready to cut earlier. I don't mind it. That's a good tactic. Yeah. We say she's about to go out on the grass. We've all thought about it. We've all thought about it. As they make their way around through the first 100, there's always carnage this part, trying to find... Your perfect spot early on in an 800 metres, but it looks like could potentially be Spicer that gets to the front. We're just going to sit right on the shoulder, if not. And on the outside of her shoulder. It's the athlete in yellow. Yeah, I'm trying, I'm trying to find the number. We're trying to see the numbers up here. Lockie's thankfully put us in the, in the box out of the weather, but 150 metres into it, and they've been given plenty of space. Probably the first race where they properly strung out. Well, it's not always easy early because you're all trying to jostle for that best position as they make their way through 300 metres. Good little pack of four forming here. And they might try and just start to drop off the back a little bit is Spicer. So in front is Hunt. It's Sarah Hunt, our unattached athlete. Behind her there is Edie Pyther. And right on her shoulder is Erin Maloney. Spicer there in fourth, but these three... Might try and just extend away a little bit, Mick. So they are making a bit of a break on the rest of the field. It might be a race in three. Spice is still looking comfortable in fourth. And the athlete from Ringwood in Alicia Harmer is looking solid in fifth as she makes her way into fourth. There's still a few hundred metres to go. Ooh. Here we go. So Erin Maloney. Yeah, Maloney of Diamond Valley making her way into the lead. Will she extend it ahead of Pyther and Hunt? 200 metres to go. And our athlete from Ringwood in Alicia Harmer is making her way up on the heels of our athlete in third position. Wow. She's making up a lot of room there. Keep your eyes on Harmer in third as she makes her way, or fourth as she makes her way into third and very shortly makes her way into second. Sure enough... Oh, I don't know if she's going to get all the way into first as Erin Maloney of Diamond Valley charges towards the finish line. But check out Harmer. there has been a super run to find herself in second position. And she'll cross the line in 
collecting a PB of about 12 seconds. Harmer being her PB of about seven or eight seconds. I told you, home of PBs. <laughs> As the rest of our competitors come down now, this Gemma Spicer crashing the tape now, and our final competitor in the first of the women's 800 metres, Laura Coleman. It's going to crash at just under three minutes. That's got to be a PB or, a, or a roundabouts. I think just outside of it. It's a good way to start the women's 800, the women's H, and then we move to the men's K. So there's uh, this is event four of this evening, but there's, well, have a guess, unless you already know <laughs> how many events we've got. <laughs> Not in the 800s overall. Oh, stop, doing, stop doing your alphabet oh, fingers. Oh, boy. <laughs> well, oh, maths isn't my strong. That's why I said guess. 490 <laughs> athletes, 8s and 15s. So let's say there's... Ooh, yeah, I like the way you're going about it. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to go 27. I'm waiting for your approval. I'm waiting for your facial expression to give you like an <laughs> approval. You go, yeah, that makes sense. That actually, yeah, 27 no, you sounds did, about right. You did all right. You were starting all right. So... 20. So oh, here he is. The great man. Perfect conditions. How'd you find it out there? I don't know we can't. Let's get another. Oh, here we go. Oh, you and me, Tim. Here you go. Well, Tim, how was it? Yeah, conditions really, really good. It's um, obviously a little bit overcast and uh, humid, but there's hardly any breeze. What was uh, the plan out there? The plan was well, just to beat as many little kids <laughs> as we could. Um, I think if you added, apart from Craig Hewitt's and from the other ranges, I think if you added up all the rest of the ages, you still wouldn't get nine. So, <laughs> um, but no, it was good fun. Good, good to be racing, and uh, you know that's yet again the beauty of the Wells Club, isn't it? You got you know old codgers like me and Craig up against these lovely young kids who don't have a lot of race craft, but uh, this is where they learn it. We were saying, were trying to work yeah. out, yeah. How did you the see seating? yourself? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, it was the only form I had was a 66 second 400 last week, so. I, you just don't know, you know. There's a lot of difference between the one lapper and the two. And uh, I think I did a pretty good job, though, midfield. I'll well, that. I thought you were pretty good. Yeah. I, I was quite proud of you, Tim. Your oh, first you. one well, ever. First miles club ever racing. Yeah, I know. And it, um, I think it, it's, it was a big decision to do it because obviously I've been I've played such a big part of making this thing happen. And uh, just to squeeze that time in to do it for me, it was actually good fun. Call the race, guys. Well, this men's K800, the voice of AV... Mate, he's, he's going to become the fittest. Uh, he's going to become the fittest Masters athlete we see out there on the track soon. I reckon. No, Thank you. Get around. <laughs> Thank you, Tim. Our men's K800 is underway. There we go. See, I was telling everyone you ran 64 for that 400. <laughs> they make their way up the back straight now. It's our Williamstown athlete in Isaac Sontag, and on the shoulder. Here we go. Our first Box Hill athlete. Good to see some home pride. Although I'm not wearing a Box Hill singlet tonight. But anyway. We got our first Box Hill athlete there sitting in second place. And this men's K800 is off to a hot start. So Sontag going to be happy to lead this one. Everybody give him plenty of space. And I think that's Kieran Barker right on his shoulder. And he's looking very aggressive. He's looking very ready to just <laughs> move his way around if he gets the chance. And Lockie Stewart of Essendon is going to be tasked with the job to try and bring these front two back. And they're setting themselves up for a nice race here, going through that first lap in 65 seconds with their seed times listed between 2.20 and 2.25. So 65 setting them up for a quick race, probably around the 2.15 mark or so if they sort of maintain a bit of pace. They're looking pretty strong at the moment. They look like they're in no sort of immediate danger of dropping this pace with 300 metres to go. Don't be surprised if something starts to come from a little bit further back as well. The mighty, mighty Western A's starting to charge up that back straight. But at the front of the race, it is still our early race leaders, Kieran Barker, now just getting right on the shoulder of a Sontag with 200 metres to go. So these two might duel it out. No, instead, Barker says, thanks so much for the start of the race, mate. I'll take it from here. It's my home track. Get out of the way. Yep. This is where I do my reps. So 150 <laughs> metres to go. It's Barker leading out Sontag. These two are going to duel it down the home straight. And 100 metres to go. Sontag gets up on the shoulder of Barker and passes with authority and just strides away with it. And he's going to come in with a tidy time, much faster than that 215 that we set after one lap. Comes through a 212, 213. Barker in second position. 
and the flood of athletes all under 2.20, which was the fastest seed time quoted before the event tonight. Oh, my God. How were the Jets One, there? One, two, three, four, five, six athletes under 2.20. And then we didn't get the times in the last few, but at least six so about PBs there. Five, I reckon two twenty-six. So, oh my God, I did not see that coming. I thought he was gone for all money. Barker, Barker, come on, comes um, with authority for about two hundred meters or so. But then Sontag just turns out about a bit of a tactical move, just having a breather for a bit. Yeah, just had a. <laughs> so I know, it's, yeah, I know it's your home track, but um, so I still got a bit of energy left. Well, you tow me along. We'll That's pretty. That. Pretty even run, really, like 65 and a 67. Yeah. That is really even yeah. for an 800. That's not easy to do. No. Nah. Anything close to even or negative splitting is quite impressive because you've got to keep that lactate sort of, I don't know, feeling in your legs still ticking over. But Sontag just goes bang in the men's K800. And we can physically see the rain falling down on the track now, which it's not windy. So it's a bit raining. A bit raining. Rainy. It, rainy. it is raining. Yeah. Oh, it is a bit, bit rainy. rainy. Just a um, little bit raining. A little bit humid, but it's not too bad. But no wind. It's the humidity that gets you. Yeah. Maybe over the 1,500, 3K, 5K, but these 800 guys, they'll be all right. Over the two-lapper, you can, you can probably handle yourself, I reckon. The old two-lapper. The old two lapper. As, as, as Mitch Tyres just doing his stretches. I'm getting right. I'm limbering <laughs> up. If you hear any grunting, don't worry. It's just, just Mitch stretching. If you hear me heavy <laughs> panting, yeah. won't be concerned about what's going to happen he's, to me in a few minutes. He started his warm up two yeah. and a half hours uh, prior to, prior to oh, your actual Mitch, warm up. I've had that much coffee. It's ridiculous. I'm I, always um, scared. <laughs> Nath Pierce, who's running in our uh, A1500 later on, just got a just got a message from him, um, a Snapchat of him pouring himself coffee? some instant coffee. <laughs> yeah. Four scoops. Four Was it scoops. Four? Yeah. Oh my god. It's like those people that you see in movies, and they get the um, they have like the jumbo size Starbucks. Oh, the huge like just yeah. abnormally too big for them. And it's like. Who doesn't love you? <laughs> yeah. You have to drink a jumbo yeah. coffee. What's going on with you? Yeah. Yeah. What's going on? Do, do you need to speak to someone? Yeah. Do you want to hug? Is everything okay? I'm okay. I'm yeah. here for you. No, do I'm you wanna, just having a jumbo do you coffee. Love it out? What's wrong with jumbo it's coffee? Like so, if you're watching this, um, Nath, let's have four, <laughs> four scoops. We're worried about Nath. Are you okay? Yeah. Nath. <laughs> <Yeah. Nice. laughs> we love you, Nath. Is everything okay with you, Nath? Do you reckon we ever get through a stream without talking about Nath? No. I don't think we <laughs> no, That's a good point. Just so Should probably stop, eh? No, he's just so interesting. I always say he's the most interesting man. Nate Nathan. The Nate Nation is our men's J800. It's the track. <laughs> so, I always remember this. I, don't know, I, I hate to bring it up, but I saw an Instagram post once and someone, someone commented and said, uh, Nathan Pierce is Melbourne running. <laughs> and I was like, I hope he doesn't oh, read that because that will get to his head so his much. Ego, his <laughs> ego can't cash that check. And lucky we're sort of we're talking about this while there's probably you know 30 or 40 odd people on the stream and not, yeah, not, not, like, not a peak. Not heaps. Yeah, yet. yeah. <laughs> not at that age. And they're like, oh, who the hell is this Nathan Nation guy? Through the first <laughs> 200 metres, who's at front? Paris Gadsden from Melbourne Uni is in the lead ahead of our athlete from Mentone Little Athletics, unattached. Um, Athletics Victoria Club, I'm guessing then our athlete in the Steigen singlet in third position doesn't help us too much as does the athlete in the Spicer Track Club kit. Absolutely. Sam Spicer, just write in with some uh, bit, a few short bios about all your athletes if you are watching. Yeah, give us a bit, Spicer. Come on. You know we love plugging the Spicer Track Club. Is this pack just starts to change shape and getting around the outside there is Lindemann. So Lindemann in Gadsden. those old Scotch colours. Right on the shoulder. And I reckon he's going to drag a couple through with him. So he's going to go the slingshot effect with 350 metres to go. Just try and work his way to the front. Our unattached athlete. Let's have a guess. Let's go Daniel Ball. Who yeah. is that who you were going to say? Yeah, I was going to go. He, it seems like a Daniel <laughs> Ball to me. So we'll try and get his number, but I think Ooh, it's, it's fallen, fallen off, off in the wind. So that gives us a bit of excuse. Yeah. <laughs> so apologies if we've got the name of our race leader wrong, but we'll try for Daniel Ball. Will Orchard coming up on the outside as well. The athlete from Glen Huntley is making strides to get up on the shoulder of Lindem and tuck his way into third position. But it is uh, the athlete with no bib, no hip number. 
let's take a guess and say it's Daniel Paul. Paul. He's having a great run. <laughs> Paris Gadsden from Melbourne University is doing all he can to hang on. Will Orchard in third position. The athlete from Glen Huntley is charging towards the finish line. But he's our athlete, our unattached athlete. In the Steigen singlet coming through for, well, it's got to be a PB because he's run 209. And the Ooh. fastest athlete before this race was a 214. As you see, the flood of athletes coming in. Seven athletes under that 214 mark. Huge. I was about to say, nearly everybody under there. Who knew that everyone peaks in December? Well, it's a good time <laughs> of the year. You know, it's a really, you go It's that Christmas. Christmas energy. Yeah, you sort of like, oh, I can justify eating more at Christmas now. As our last competitor in Jude Barrett comes down to crash the tape, 232. But what a performance there from our, I reckon you're right. I reckon you've nailed it. Oh, I think it's Daniel Ball. Yeah. Apologies to anybody who's watching this race and that is their son, nephew, friend, brother, cousin, whoever that was that won. And your last name is Ball. Daniel Ball. Yeah, I, yeah, I reckon we're pretty safe because third, num hip number three from Mentone, mm. Riley Sullivan. Hi to Riley. Um, yeah, Daniel Ball, I reckon. I reckon. Well done, Daniel. Well done, Daniel. All suit on Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> Either way, Daniel. our winner got a PB, which we love. A big PB. Our second women's race now. Rain's starting to fall a little bit harder now. And we're saying the rain's not a bad thing, but I mean, you prefer it not to be raining. Yeah. <laughs> Let's be honest. Well, we prefer it to be <laughs> raining than, than the thunderstorms that were going on a little a little earlier. So good to yeah. see that they've hopefully touched wood. It's just a bit annoying for your warm-up. I mean, you'll be adding it later. Yeah, <laughs> Maybe not. Go? There you go. So as we said, it's um, there's a bit of, bit of heat out there still. 25 degrees right yeah. now. 22 as we hit 8 p.m. and then it's dropping to 20, so still well, very warm for it's gonna be um, 10 p.m. Although you've been acclimatising up in uh, North Queensland, I have. It <laughs> hasn't dropped below I reckon 24 degrees since September. Overnight so during the day, what, yeah, all day long, and yeah. it's about 214 percent humidity. Weather, rain? Nah, nah. Just sunny days. It's meant to be wet season, but I haven't yeah, haven't felt it yet. It yet. That's um, well, you'll be acclimatised these conditions. I'll be set. I'm excited. Not as excited as I am about this women's G800, though. So we've got 12 women on the line. What, is, what are we... Around the 2... What 230, 240 mark. 238s are you know, the fastest of them. So we'll be looking to cruise through that first lap in probably a 75, 76. Set them up nicely. So let's see how accurate Mick can be on his th first 400 pacing. I reckon he's spot on. I'm going to say 75 takes it through was our... Athletes sort themselves out. I think it's Kiara Wiley of those Yarra Valley colours. Or possibly and then we've got a few athlete. Wellington athletes. It's hard athletes, to tell yeah. when they're next to each other. But we definitely see a Spicer Truck Club athlete there. Yep. Sam Spicer sent us through some bio info. Always in the shirt as well. And getting to the front there is Charlotte Cunningham of Wellington. So she's made the trip down and she's going to make it worth it. 34 seconds through the first 200. And she's really the only one with really good room at the moment. She's five metres clear of her other Wellington teammate. I think in Canavan. Oh no, Canavan in third, and it's Wiley in second. Kiara Wiley. So the athletes in the white with the colourful stripes. One, two, up. three. Yeah. Wellington and the Yarra Rangers. I'm trying to break up the yeah. colour tone is Devine. Cunningham, Canavan, Wiley. Oh, you one, two, three. The athlete from Mentone in Willow Devine from Mentone sitting in fourth position. As now it's our Wellington 1 2 as they cruise through in 73. I wouldn't say cruising through in 73. Jeep, so they're going faster than what we even predicted it to be. So it is Charlotte Cunningham still leading it out. Her teammate there in Emily Canavan just slipping into second place there, but she also might try and bring through with her Kiara Wiley. So Wiley on the back of Canavan, and they're desperately trying to stalk down Charlotte Cunningham with 300 metres to go, who might just have to try and latch onto these two because I think they're going to go right around the shoulder and going to go the widest of them all at the moment is Kiara Wiley. So Wiley now just makes her way around the two Wellington athletes from the Yarra Rangers and have a look at a flyer from the back there, even in Sandringham, and it could be Cecilia Sessi Sisold. I hope I've got that right. So Sisold <laughs> going to try and launch. And now we go one more attack Ooh. again. Canavan, she's back. Gone past Wiley with gusto as she rounds the discus cage. 
She just bought it at a time, bought it at a time. It's gone a long way around, had to do it the hard way. But as they enter the straight, it is Canavan Wiley. Now, athlete from Sandringham closing strong as well. Are they going to go the mid 230s? Might Collect break themselves a couple of PBs. Might okay. even break the 230 oh, on the 230. dot. 30 31. Wiley. Can Canavan Wiley. Clissold. And Divine. In one, two, three, four. And Cunningham. Strong effort early. Coming through around that 240 mark. So what a performance there. We saw that earlier in the men's race where it looked like maybe you've just run out of a little bit of steam, drop back into second place. But no, nah, it's just a quick little breather and a quick little, oh, hold on, I want to win this thing. It's not Great bad. Running. There's been a few good good races, like a bit of to and froing. A bit like, uh, how was the, uh, the men's Zatapec 10K oh. last week? Mate, <laughs> the first half of it was just... It was outrageous. Yeah, just... I it don't was know. a race. Oh, yeah. That was entertaining it for was me. A real, you like that sort of stuff? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I can't stand it. <laughs> I'm like, just get going. I love what you're. If I was in that race, I would be frustrated. Yeah. But a spectator, you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Loves it. Yeah. Interesting. I mean, they just almost gave it to Jack in the second half, though. Like, Clarky, you know, had a fair old crack at it, and, and to his credit, he held on for as long as he could. But, um, mate, Jack is just. Oh, it's going to be hard for him to lose that. Yeah. But it was sort of interesting just going, oh, okay. Mm. What um, tactics? Yeah, exactly. I like the Guzman move, to be honest, early in that race. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah, it was yeah. just like, you know, <laughs> it's like, oh, okay. obviously we're going to reel him in, but he's just yeah. going, all right, boys, come on. Tell you what I thought when he went to the front, I go, oh, yeah, I remember. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I remember good. what he does. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Guzman's actually really good. Yeah. I remember he's good, but I remember he, he does things he like does this in races, front, yeah, yeah, which I like. Yeah, he, he <laughs> mixes it up. It was a great oh, meet. Cause probably haven't seen him race for... For a little while, have we, Guzman? Not for a while. Yeah. No, he, hasn't, he hasn't been out in... Especially in Australia. I was about to say, the Australian track scene Would have been pre-COVID. Yeah, probably. He spends a lot of his time over with the, the Tin Man crew, but... Yeah. Yeah, the Zatapec was really good. The women's race was fantastic. The um, the 10K? Yeah. Leanne Pompiani? One of the greatest last names of all time. It Just rolls off the tongue? Yeah. Pompiani. Well, when and when the, the atmosphere is hype and you Pompiani, yeah. I was like, oh, my goodness, it was a great meet. Did you enjoy it? Yeah, I did. I appreciated your I text. did. I, oh, <laughs> I appreciate that was text. that was the single greatest quote that I um, that I've heard in athletics. I was getting right. Was, <laughs> what was it? it? Was if you if you do not like what Jack Rayner is doing right now, you do not like distance <laughs> running. <laughs> oh, I was so bad. I'm like, it's true. Yeah. It's true. If like, you don't like it, then you're just not a fan of the sport. It was factual. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see if we can see it here in our men's. Hold on. Is it I? I. I. 800. I or one? Oh, boy. <laughs> the men's 1 I 800. I. The 1 800. It is I, our seventh event of 41 events for this evening. We have a program going from 6 30 all the way to. 10 o'clock. Of how many So events? hang in there. 41. I don't think we got the answer to that earlier. I was a mile away. I went 27. So a men's I, 800 metres, gets underway. It's an unattached athlete who's going to get towards the front. Oh, let's go. Yeah, there's no. I'm going to go Rossi, maybe. Or it's Hutchinson. One of the two. He is charging his way. And bridging a gap of about, uh, what are we, 10 or so metres yeah. across a train of athletes trying to catch him. Well, it's unattached and unattached. So we're going to have to wait for them to bring yeah. past and, and get their hip numbers. But a few Glenn Huntley athletes front. represented. A few Mornings Peninsula athletes made the journey. And the fastest seed time is about 2.13. And they're crushing that right now, going through in the 61, 62. So Plenty of time up their Hansen. sleeves. Hansen James leading Hansen. out Hutchinson. Hanson. Hanson. As opposed to James Hanson. Yeah, not that Hanson. James Hanson. So Hanson has a handsome lead at the moment. He's about 15 metres ahead. It's our men from Glen Huntley. You're going to try and launch around the shoulder of Cade Hutchinson with 300 metres to go. And watch these three just pick James Hanson back. So 
It's, it's going to be Hutchinson who might run out a few wheels, but I won't call anything too early because we've seen in the previous races, sometimes people just need a little bit of a break. So going to try and launch now. It's going to be Friedman and Lambert. I think Lambert is the one behind, so it could be Shamir Freedom who's going to try and peg him back and try and bring Lambert through with him. But it is, it's still Hanson check, out in front. Check out the wheels on Lambert in third position now, making his way quickly into second position. Maybe if it's shorter, it makes him look like he's going a lot faster. But the athletes from Glenn Huntley, ooh, as... Who was it in first position? Who's hanging on? Mitch. Hands on. <laughs> Hands on. He's hanging on and charging towards the front. And Cade Hutchinson making a light run for it. Ooh. Ooh, and just doesn't dip. The 2.11, tidy, tidy time. A couple of PBs for the lads. I think you know, that hands was hands on. on. I think hands on dips just ahead. He's got the lactic. <laughs> That's lactic legs. Jeez, again, though, because I thought hands on was Ooh. done. Yeah. They just keep finding another another gear down this home straight. <laughs> Great racing. Look at this. Throw a Hands blanket on over him. And Hunch Hutchinson. Oh. He just needed another metre. Yeah, one more metre. Oh. <gasps> Good dip. Great oh. dip. One more step. How's and that? he's passed him there. So great racing. Oof. It's getting exciting down here. Look at the arms pumping. I need some motivation. Yeah, there's a little Lambert in the middle. Okay, arms, arms. Don't forget your arms. <laughs> Channeling Newman's out F. for your 1500 later. Yeah, I might need him in my ear. Just to really pump me up. Is that women's F800? No, uh, men's H800. H. H. Whichever. He's up next. Good crowd building here too. Is a bit of a crowd. I don't know where. There's plenty of umbrellas about. I was about yeah. to say, we usually get a crowd of people on that back straight, but I think everyone's sort of looking for a bit of cover under the grandstands, under marquees, and under their umbrellas. Lucky we've got a few marquees set up, thanks to uh, On Athletics. They do great and work. Sort of sponsoring this year. Athletics Victoria and the Milers Club. Have you got a pair of Ons? I don't, but I know Morgan talks about them a lot, obviously, given yeah. he's with the On Track Club. But. Um, they look very, oh, I very love the look of them. Yeah. They they look, are, um, I they love look the little, like, um, honeycomb effect yeah. that they've got. I like they that. They look comfortable. They look They look Swiss. Yeah. yeah. They do look, <laughs> they look so yeah. bougie. Yeah. And obviously. Like clean, polished. Nice. Nice. Just yeah. nice. Yeah. yeah. Neutral. They're attractive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're very neutral. They're tonal. They're obviously fast. We saw Ollie Hall win the Commonwealth Games in them. So they're clearly yeah. very quick. No, it's, it's sleek. Sleek branding by the On Crew. Really taken off. That whole On Track Club has been uh, a massive push for the brand. So good to see them down here. And their signs and everything. That they've done a really good job setting this up. So a Men's H, 800. We're going to look around that. Oh, we're going to see a sub 210 here for sure. I'm going to say 207 wins it. They're lining up to break 210. Only one athlete in Andrew Ray. Number four. Number five. five. Who has <laughs> who has broken 210 at 209.50 is the athlete in the black and blue. So we'll be keeping our eyes on him. Lead the field around. 210's a big mark as well. You never forget when you break 210. Yeah, it's those milestones, eh? Yeah. It goes 210, 205, I'd even say. And then that magical two-minute barrier. Yeah. Never did it myself. Never broke the two? <laughs> nah. 20, 20, 20 or 201. Oh, you'd rather yeah. be 201. Yeah. You don't want to be the Broke the nine for 3K. That's That was a big one. That's a good one. That's a good one, yeah. That's a bigger one, I reckon. Because they make their yeah. way around. A man in the inside, I think it's... Uh, Suvan Sujadran from yeah. Springvale. Deenong Springvale in the pale blue and red leads the way. Our athlete from Nunawading in the green, Zach Malich, tucks in the second position. So 29. Through 200. So Sujadran, he's going to lead it out. Behind him there is Jay Alath, our unattached athlete. 
And Melik behind him there for Nana Wanning. So they're going to try and string themselves out towards the back of the pack there, a little bit bunched up. And our fastest man in the in the race that we spoke about earlier, and Andrew Ray, tucked he's right just, at the yeah, back on the rail. Sitting so. at the back. Maybe he's not in form or maybe he's just waiting. Got saying up his sleeve. Let's see how quick it goes through. He's got a 209. They're going to go about 62, 63. 62 it is. Okay, about as it there. quick as the last race went through. So they might have the wheels in the second half. Still plenty of time up their sleeve to close in a 67 as Jalath just extends his lead on the rest of the field. Sujadran just dropping back slightly and Shap from Western Athletics making his way in third position as our athlete from Melbourne Grammar School, but unattached tonight. Cruising in third, in gain, second, sorry, getting up on the heels of Jalath. We'll have a look as they make their way up the back straight. Our fastest man that we mentioned, Andrew Ray, just getting into his running now. So he might have left it a little bit too late as Jalath now feels the wrath of our other unattached athlete. And he just goes straight to the arms and he just kicks it straight into fifth gear. It's foot off the brake. It's all gas as he makes his way down the final 100 metres. I think, I don't think I know, this man's going sub 210. So we're 157 <laughs> on the clock right now. How fast will he go as he's just left him in his wake and he's just going to come down, crash the tail. 205 just over 205 so Beaumont there Charlie Beaumont and look at that we had five men under 210 Jailath included and so too was the fastest man in the field apparently Andrew Ray so Charlie Beaumont stand and deliver my friend that was um, just once again sitting 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 he's obviously done a bit of work over the uh, past few months if he's in the APS system running for Melbourne Grammar with the APS season sort of kicking off around August, September, yeah. doing APS finals in October, all schools through so November. Much. Bit of racing under his belt already. The season's pretty much done by the time you <laughs> reach Christmas if yeah, you're in the right. APS system. That's the thing. I feel like you either go to Falls, which you really can't this year. It sounds yeah. like that's going to be near impossible. Or you just take a break. And you, you yeah. just take a little bit of time off and then ramp back up into it. There's only one or two options. But yeah, Bowman obviously peaking, so collecting himself a seven-second PB. Next event on the track, event nine, the women's F, 800 metres. So nine events in the 800 down. We've got 12 to go, 21, 800 metres lined up. As we said, a record-breaking night for entries. We've got 41 races here at the Box Hill Miles Club tonight. So they did a dash for cash tonight, $100, and the event has been randomly selected. So these are the men's E, 800 metres, coming up in about 20 minutes. We're dash for cash, win again, $100 of the men's E, 800. We turn our attention to the women's F, 800 on the track right now, fastest athletes who are on the track. Well, pretty much everyone's run 235 or 236, so you probably throw a blanket over the field as they get underway with Sudran. From Dinong Springvale, sprinting away on the outside. And it looks like Sarah Adam. The Richmond Harriers single it on, making her way to the front of the field. And with a gap of about 5, 10 metres, you can't see it on the screen now. But it is Adam, Sujadran, and then the flood of athletes behind. Who's making a charge for it? 235 will be well and truly broken tonight if she can sustain this pace. Sujran just fading as our athlete from Essendon in Jamison Towers. In third, gets up on Sujran's heels. Sarah Adam from Richmond Harriers. First lap in 67, 68 seconds. Well 
under 2.35 pace. Well under 2.35 pace for all of this field. But Adam, massive, massive lead. It's her race to lose, but it's her opportunity to rewrite a massive PB here. As Jamison Towers sitting comfortably in second, and then the flood of athletes behind. Our early leader in Sujadran. Still running a strong race. Emily Southern from Eagle Hawk. Out at Bendigo makes her way in the third position at the back of screen. But Sarah Adam. Huge run. She's led from the start. Jamison Tower from Essendon doing all she can to close strong and probably is closing a little bit stronger. But Adam's done a lot of the work early to put herself in the best position of winning. But it's going to be a massive, massive sprint for home now as they both enter the straight. Will Adam be able to hang on as Tower tries to get up on her heels? She may just run out of time, but 2.35 PBs for the ladies have been absolutely smashed. 2.25, 2.26. And let's look at the rest of the field. Madeline Kearney, 2.32, 2.33, 2.34. So the first one, two, three, four, five, six athletes all coming in under 2.35 and rewriting themselves some PBs. Gutsy run in that last race from Adam. Just hang on. If that was a 1,000 metre race or even a 900 metre race, Towers might have got the win. The men's G, the event 10 of 41 for the evening. 10 of 21 800 metre races. We're standing up in the commentary box for now, but uh, legs are getting weary just after 45 minutes, and Mitch has still got two and a half hours till he's got to uh, till he's got a race in the men's F 1500. Because <laughs> he's doing practice 10 meter run throughs <laughs> in the club rooms here. Everyone is keeping warm under the on athletics marquees. As warm and dry as they can be. Because the rain has been pretty consistent here at Box Hill. I said it's still warm though. And there's not a breath of wind to be seen. Welcome back, Mitch. Why are you so puffed out? I'm limber. I'm limber. <laughs> I just remembered, though, on that second last run through, you ringing in my ears, you're saying, and Mitch has got two and a half hours until he's running. Like, oh, two hours 20. This. Two hours 20. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Better limber up. As they're underway in the men's G, 800 metres, PBs of 207 or 208, or you are not in this race. Wow, that is a very tight margin. It is. You could throw a blanket over the field. If they all run exactly on PB pace, but like we saw in the last race, they will start to string out. But not so much. It's probably the thickest pack that we've seen in an 800 metre race to date. Probably lining up to crack that 205 pace, hitting that first lap, what, 60, 61, setting themselves up. Yeah, I think so. I reckon they'll go through around that 60, 61 mark, and they're just. Nobody's spotting each other any room. They've pushed a couple of competitors wide. It's two of our unattached athletes who are going to lead it out. I think it might be Hunter Rubino on the inside there. But once they jog on past us, we'll get a better look. So actually, I think it's Finn Johnson on the inside. And on the outside of him, in that beautiful white UTA singlet, I think that's a number nine on the hip. No. Nope. So it would be struggle to be Jesse Lumby because he is in the middle of that pack, <laughs> and So we'll try and get a read on it. 
as they make their way around for this second lap, but he might just go right around the shoulder of our old Melbourneian athlete in Finn Johnson, who's unattached. And tucked in beautifully behind him there is our man from Glenn Huntley as well. So they're going to make their way up this back straight for the last time. And this is where the kickers really start to get excited. He's gone right around the outside here, our unattached athlete. But he's got a little bit of company with him. So I think that is going to be uh, Sideritis now who just gets right on the shoulder. And again, our man who was leading is not done with yet. As now he just latches onto the back of the kickers. And 150 metres to go now. The men are going to try and put them through their paces and see who can take it out. So he gets right on the shoulder there of Sideritis. He's got the benefit of the rail, but I don't think he's got quite it left in his legs. It's our unattached athlete. He just goes right around the shoulder. Sideritis not done with yet. He doesn't want to give up the lead. So it's our unattached athlete, Sideritis. Maybe no. I think it's going to be Rabino. Hunter Rabino takes it out. Sideritis there in second place. Finn Johnson settles for third. We have a look at those times. Only ticking over 2.08 yeah, there, so you'd a lot imagine. Of athletes. About eight or nine athletes under 2.07. All under. 2.03 to 2.06. And, yeah, Rubino, Hunter Rubino in the sleek, sleek kit, UTA. I don't mind that. Kit, I like it. I like it. Don't know what it is, yeah, but I like you it. You don't know UTA? <laughs> Can't say I've heard of it, but he's put them on display for sure. Hunter Rubino. He takes out the men's G800. UTA University, nah. United, Ultra Trail Australia. That, <laughs> that could stink of that. <laughs> United Track Association. Yeah, let's find out. <laughs> Good for anyone. Whatever, before we make Just drop it in the comments. <laughs> um, Mitch, we're two races away from the Dash for Cash. 100 Huge. bucks up for grabs. Not in this race, not in the next race, but in the men's E800 metres will be the $100 Dash for cash. It's been randomly selected out of our 41 races. Always a fun part of the night. So win that cash. Firstly, your race, you must be lucky enough to have been selected in those 41 races. And then you've got to be good enough to win that specific race. To take away that 100 bucks. Well, it's certainly on your mind, isn't it? I mean, if you're fortunate enough to be the one to be selected for the random race, not only were you nervous to run a PB, you now want to win 100 bucks. And you're not going to think about anything else. One of the best hairdos of the night is undeniably on the track right now. I think it might be Nathaniel Ueka that we've seen here quite a few times before. An absolute workhorse of the Milers Club. So we have 12 athletes all around that 205 mark. Give me 205 to 207, maybe even a 204 in here. Give me, give me, give me. Enough. And I haven't. There's no 204. <laughs> it's 206 to 207. Otherwise, you are not in this race. Yeah. You have to be in that mark. Otherwise, no entry for you. Well, we've got a 205 in Charlie Gunn in the St. Kevin's kit in the middle. So we'll put a target on his back. The gun. <laughs> Everyone's watching you now, Charlie. He got good bullets or blanks. Let's find out <laughs> this evening. The gunman. Right in the middle. They're so just waiting. I, um, oh, I was about to say, I could be wrong, but it looks like the... Um, the rain has stopped, but I am wrong because it has not. Well, <laughs> as I look closer, as it turns it's just out, not as obvious, not as heavy. It is raining. I could be wrong, but uh, <laughs> but I'm not. But I'm not. But I am. I've corrected myself, and I'm not wrong. So our men's F800 forced to just wait and cop the slight rain, even though Mick thinks it's not raining. Yeah, it's slight. I can see Slight my competitor right. out there as well on the bench. Charlie Gunn. He's just the look got of... He's got the... Um, the gunman. Yeah, the, the look of a gunman, the look of a sniper. I, wanted to, oh, <laughs> I want him to do well. Ooh, and they're off. Crisp start. So let's see who gets out early. It's always interesting to see who's going to get out fastest. It looks like the man on the inside of the Blake gunman. Anderson in the all-black half tights. And Nike top... Combo. Classic Ando. Classic Ando to take a charging lead early on. And Maddie classic Masara. gun just to slip in in second position. So the gunman is going to tuck in behind Masara. Or is it Craig Sanford? I think it's Craig Sanford of so Waverley. Oh, right. A classic Craig Sanford. He loves Miler's Club. And he's so good at them as well. He's almost an expert. So he gets to the front, the gunman behind him there. On the inside of him was Blake Anderson, and on the outside is our man from Glenn Huntley, I think, in James Gibbs. 
So watch. A few guns at the head of the field. <laughs> James being the main one. He's sliding in behind James, the Sanford. Most one. <laughs> the actual one. 62. Okay, they're going to need a little bit of work oh, to bang. do in that That's second half. Blake Anderson. There was no gap, and he just made one with those enormous biceps. We expected someone else to go bang, but it is Anderson, no. not Gunn. The gunman fired a blank there at the bell, and it's Anderson now who starts to gap the field, and they're going to try and get pulled through there, I think, by our man from Williamstown, and that is going to be the Shield Muir. So Muir now, he leads about a string of six athletes who have to go as wide as going into Doncaster to be able to get to the front of the pack. It's our man from Deacon now who's going to try and chase down Blake Anderson, and the gunman, he's caught on the inside rail. Check out, oh, who Ooh. is it? It's Muir. And Bradshaw, they're going to do all they can to bridge that gap. And they are doing it ever so slightly. But Anderson is going to enter the straight ahead of the rest. Will he have the wheels to hang on? Has he gone too early? Muir. Muir is charging hard. Bradshaw is doing all he can. But is Muir going to take the win from Anderson? Anderson too strong oh. in the end. Going through in a 204-205. Maybe just just a little bit slow on that first lap yeah. to collect PBs for the field. Anderson obviously um, had enough waiting around and paid off for him because he collected a tidy couple of second PB and held off the rest of the field. Muir did pretty well as well in uh, charging home in second for a 204-205, collecting himself a second PB, but might be no dice for the rest of the field. Hell of a finish. Hell of a finish. Almost a blanket finish I thought there, Muir yeah, was definitely going to get it. Yeah, I thought, again, similar. A couple more metres. That race is well and truly over. But it's been some unreal like racing. Look at that. Oh, the dip. The dip. Drop your gym program as well, Blake Anderson. Or mates of Blake Anderson who are watching. Feel free. Mech Dyer on Instagram. Just put it straight in my DMs, please. As we now look for the women's E800. Another 12 competitors are registered for this race. This is going to be exciting. They're all around that 230 mark. So anything under 230 flat will be a PB out here for a lot of these athletes. And around that 234, 235 is the slowest competitor in this field by PB. So only a matter of seconds separating this women's E800 metres. And there's one, two, three, four, who have all just coincidentally run 230.00. We're getting pretty squashed together now with, um, with these times. What better environment to run? A PB where there's like 10, well, not only 10 other people in your race, but the race before and the race after, yeah. pretty much all within five exactly seconds. Exactly the same. Mm. It's exciting. Distance running has depth in Australia. <laughs> Bang. Box Gun goes. Sarah Hastings from Mentone in the middle, getting a strong start. An athlete from Wellington on the outside, probably best of the field at this point, is Cadence Fleming. In the white, red, and blue stripes of Wellington. Crosses the orange little Dublackies in first. Does a hard what do cross in the Dublackies. <laughs> Dublackies. <laughs> Is that a technical name? Cones. So Fleming gets through the Dublackies. The fastest of the field. Not slowing down either. Mix. Uh, leave it about it. 10 metres on the rest of them. As, uh, and they are strung out. There's no pack running in this women's e-race. So Cadence Fleming just wanting to get it over with early and just put the women through their paces behind her. 300 metres through, no signs of slowing down at the moment. But also these women more than happy to let Fleming have it her way. So a Doncaster athlete now jumps towards the front of this pack and that is going to be Charlotte Senior who's going to bring through a plethora of women behind her. I haven't spotted too much room. So have a look at this Fleming. Going to crash it at 69 seconds through the first 400 metres. That is well and truly under the 2 minute 30 PB as advertised before this race. And they just start to ramp it up a little bit more. So Senior has a big breadth of women behind her. They're all ready to pounce but it's still Fleming 20 metres ahead with 300 metres to go. We've seen some crazy things in the back end of this 800. <laughs> we could see it again. They've got time in the bank. The field has time in the bank to go under PB paces of 230 to 234 right now. And Fleming, she's led from the front. She's looked the best. And that lead of 30 metres isn't shortening at all. 
So 147 with 200 metres to go. You'd assume that's going to be well and truly under PB pace. It's Fleming still leaning it out. We have two Box Hill athletes just latched onto the tack at the back of this pack. And now they start to get towards the front of it. So Fleming may be just starting to run out of steam a little bit with 120 metres to go in this race. There's a group of four now just trying to stalk their way up this home straight. It's still Fleming leaning it out. Now just trying to make up some room on the inside there is going to be Sarah Hastings. And on the outside of her, I believe, is going to be Charlotte Wilson. But it is still Fleming. She might be able to hold on. I think she will. She's gone gun to tape and she'll crash it. 2.25. One, a two, shiny new PB. Three, four, five, six, seven athletes under 2.30. And another, it's at nine under 2.34. So what a race. Well, we Plenty of PBs here in the women's E800 metres. And Fleming, gun to tape. Haven't seen that yet tonight. Always hard to do. And now we've got dash for cash. Men's E100 metres, dash for... Uh, men's E800 metres, dash for cash. A lot of faster run-throughs there than advertised PBs. Obviously, the cash is really <laughs> weighing on a couple of mines. So 12 athletes will toe the line in the next event. PBs between 2.03 and 2.09. Oh, Might be season's best. Two oh or 2.02. We'll go 2.02 in the mix. 202, 203, 204, 205. So a bit more of a spread than we have in the previous couple of races, which have pretty much been within one or two seconds. So this will be interesting. I might have to take a seat. <laughs> Save those legs, Mitch. Getting a lot of texts from two, people. Two hours till race time. <laughs> Just got to keep myself relaxed. Is our dash for cash. This is real pressure. If you want to touch athletes here as well, so imagine just rolling into a Miles Club and coming out $100 richer. Simple as that. Be pretty exciting. Bendigo athlete right there in front of your screen. It's Daniel Noden. So, again, similarly, 202.9 is our fastest. And I think there might be an error because our number 12, lane 12 athlete is a 209. So yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Maybe season's vest first. PB. There might be a bit of a backstory there. Mm. Just managed to work himself in there. Well done, Josh Turner. We'll, we'll know if he comes dead last yeah. by five, five seconds. We'll be assessing. <laughs> Go, oh boy. I think they might have seated Josh in the wrong spot. Or if he wins, it'd be incredible. And it'll be a hundred dollars richer. We're <laughs> underway here in the dash for cash. The men's E800 metres. And let's see who tries to get out there quickly. It might even be our man Noden from, from Bendigo. Uh, Taj Davies is looking good. In lane three in the pale blue singlet, Brad Ganley from the mighty, mighty Western Athletics in the inside lane. So it is Ganley and Davies, one, two. Our athlete from Ringwood in Thomas Linnett puts himself in the mix as well. Oh, <laughs> But no, Goodwin. who spoils the party? Declan Goodwin spoils the party. It's blue, blue, our top one, two, both unattached athletes. So Goodwin knows something's up for grabs. Lynette is trying to not let him bridge that gap too quickly. And from Richmond, we see Mark Stodden is chasing hard, putting himself in the mix as well. I Everyone's have a feeling Stodden's won a dash for cash before. He looks very Ooh, familiar. Okay. So I reckon he knows <laughs> what he's doing dashing. He knows where to <laughs> sit. 60 seconds through the first 400 metres. This will be a very impressive one if they can even split. But out the front of the race, it's still Declan Goodwin. And we've got our unattached athletes just trickled in nicely behind him there. And I reckon the man to watch out of that pack is the one out of Ringwood in Thomas Lynette. Ooh, so 300 to go. Here it. he is. Check Danny out Noden. Daniel Noden from Bendigo just up on the outside of the field making his way into the lead. Check out our athlete in the white singlet in Neeson as well. Dominic Neeson. This is anyone's race as the lead has changed several times over this one and a half lap so far. But he's Noden, who's looking the best of the pack. Who's our athlete from Kilo St. Bernard's, David Matthews, putting himself in the mix. What a race for the dash for cash. And they are dashing towards the finish line. Noden doing all he can to hang on. Matthews charging hard. 
and he is going to dash for the cash and go home $100 richer. Well done, David Matthews. And he's a tidy David times Matthews. as well. Low twos. The Maccas is on David tonight, boys. <laughs> 100 bucks richer. What a finish, too. That was such a good race. I'd like to watch that back and see where David was early on. Mm. There's so many lead changes. himself in the middle there and just yeah. his time. Daniel Noden, I thought he was going to be the one for a bit. Yep. Stodden, he put him. He was probably in the top three for like the whole top three or four for the whole race. Tommy Lineout as well. He put himself in some nice positions. The Ringwood athlete. And then the boys in blue kind of went missing after a lap. Yeah, they set it up though, didn't they? There you go. So have a look at this finish. Oh, and Meeson as well. Yep. Dom Meeson thought he was going to move around at 200 to go, but just couldn't quite get there. And David Matthews, look at that. It's all about the arms down the home straight. That's what I've been noticing tonight. Yeah. <laughs> All about the arms. Actually, I say the boys in blue went missing, but they came fourth and fifth. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's not good enough, though. Yeah, they yeah. went missing. <laughs> it's not first and second. All right, we're getting up to Pony and now. Women's D. Women's D. We're going sub 230s. Chloe Lynette. Back to back siblings, possibly? Yes, maybe? No? So? Uh, both from Ringwood, yeah. You'd say so. That's a pretty confident call. I reckon that's a, not a bad call. Yeah, I'll give you that. Good assumption to make. Thank you. <laughs> Need that confidence. So our women's D, 800, 12 competitors in here. What are they separated by, Mick? They're separated by about a lane each. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you two, mean time. About two meters About 3.5 3. <laughs> meters per apart. bend. That's like yeah. when you ask your dad how far away is dinner, and he goes, oh, 10 meters? Yeah. <laughs> yeah shut up. How do you find it? Yeah. Oh, pleasant. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Pretty good. <laughs> nice All right. No, seriously. Done. Separate by about four seconds in PBs, if that's what you're asking. I'm always amazed by how harsh the cut into the rails is by the people in lane six, seven, and eight. Mm. I've always, like, I was always very analytical with it and running the tangents. So you'd sort of say, okay, over the 100 metres, you make your way slowly, that slowly, slowly. Me about you. Yeah, <laughs> be analytic. I thought you'd just be crash. No, nah, just no, nah, no, nah, not me. So, but yeah, I always love the people watching people go from lane eight into lane one, like within the space of ten meters. I love that. Yeah, the carnage. That's yeah, what I do. <laughs> just get it straight in there. It's our Ringwood athlete, Chloe Lynette, the, the sister, sister of sister. And a couple of Sam Spicer Truck Club. Sam Spicer. We're we'll calling it the Sam Spicer Truck oh, Club. Oh boy, we're giving him athletes in the uh, in the navy blue singlets in the mix as well, or in the race. They're not quite in the mix at the front of the field. Matty Tarabay there of Athletics Nana Wadding on the rail, just going to stalk right behind Chloe Lynette there. So mm. seventy seconds through that first four hundred meters, so well and truly under the PB pace of around that two twenty seven to two thirty mark. As now we start to see the rest of these women just jump onto the back of our early race leader in Chloe Lynette, mm. and right behind her. There. So doing Gemma a lot Young, of work. Gemma Young in third, Lucy Kearney in fourth. As our eastern suburbs, one, two, three, four at this point, and it's with Tarabay. Tarabay just coming up on the shoulder of Lynette and passing. Will Tarabay hold on? She is so far. It is our Doncaster athletes who are looking to do some work to also pass Lynette, but they can't quite do that and aren't going to do that before the bend as they disappear behind the back of the discus cage. Look out for Lucy Kearney here of Doncaster. She's gone right around her compatriot. Now she's going to go right around the shoulder of Chloe Lynette and put a little bit of pressure on Tarabay. And so too, one of our unattached athletes is coming right from the back. So it's going to be a blanket finish at the moment. It's Kearney. She goes right around them on the inside is Chloe Lynette. She's not done with yet. Tarabay starting to drop back. But as they make their way down here with only 50 metres to go, it's going to be a champion. And Lucy Kearney takes it in 225. Second is Lynette. Third is Tarabay in on the inside of her was our unattached athlete, and that was Evie Lurie. And eight athletes, eight athletes under 230. Once again, maybe a little bit slow for that first lap because a lot of the athletes here have PBs of that 226, 227, 228. So a few people walking away happy, maybe a few people not so much just before Christmas. But that's all right. Because Christmas is right around the corner. <laughs> and it makes if you're not happy okay. tonight, yeah. hopefully you're happy in a few days when you get your presents. Santa <laughs> is coming to town. It's cold for Mitchie. But everybody else, I'm sure you'll get some lovely presents. The men's D800 on track, yes. Oh, she 
get a PB tonight. It doesn't matter if you get shit presents. Because oh. this could be a present. Yeah, this is it. Yeah, you got a PB. What more do you, want? you walk off the track, your parents just go, Merry Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> Hope you enjoy your present. Set this up for you. <laughs> what do you mean? Oh, well, this is your present. <laughs> well, you're not going to be too pleased on Sunday. So what are the athletes separated by, Mitch, apart from... A well... Lane? 201.1 is the fastest by the looks of it, and that's Robbie Hopkins of St. Kevin's. So he's there in those fluorescent yellow spikes, and it drags all the way out to a Amiga 202.5, and that's Geordie Welsh and Riley Walsh. No, Geordie Walsh and Riley Walsh, and one's unattached and one's from Essendon. So that's confusing, but <laughs> 0.6 <laughs> of a second is all that separates this race. Um, I got my eyes on Simon Fitzpatrick, who's been running for years and years and years, but haven't seen him. In the last three, yeah. four, or five, you know, recognise yeah, the name, recognise the fa yeah. face. Absolutely. So here we go. Simon Fitzpatrick on the outside of there. He's just going to tuck himself into the middle of the pack as they certainly waste no time in trying to find the jets behind the wheels as they're going to try and stretch themselves out along that back straight for the first time. Let's see what they hit it at 200 metres, 27. So now we're starting to ramp up. They are around that two-minute mark, so we could see in this race a couple of first ever sub two minutes broken. For tonight. <laughs> tonight, yes. <laughs> and Hopkins and Robinson, they won two. Hopkins in the St. Kevin's College uniform as opposed to the St. Kevin's Athletics Club. We haven't seen the stripes out on the track tonight. Is Hopkins and Robinson and Fitzpatrick, who we believe might have run in meet one. We said we haven't seen him on the track for a while, apart from this season, of course. 58 through the first 400 metres. So he's looking really strong out there as Robert Hopkins. As the rest of them try and make their way up. Simon Fitzpatrick, he's very good, Fitzy, when he's on. So he's just going to tuck in on that rail there and try and get into some familiar territory we've seen him in before. As coming around the shoulder now is our man from Nana Wanning and Corey Robinson. So Robinson's going to be the one to try and make it honest up the back straight. Here comes Fitzy, though. He's just getting right on the shoulder. Watch him ramp up. He's good over the shorter distance. And Kevin Zhu now of Glen Huntley starts to ramp it up. So one more ahead of there is Broden Bond. He's going to get going. There's a lot of Steigen singlets out there now. With 150 metres to go, it's Fitzy just starting to wheel out a little bit wider. Still leading it out is Corey Robinson. So it's Robinson, Fitzpatrick. Watch this. I said it's all about the arms in the last 100 metres. <laughs> and Fitzy's got the biggest of the track. So Fitzpatrick, he goes right around the outside of Robinson. And he's going to crash it. Watch the clock. 55, 56, 57. There's a couple of two, sub two minutes. And I reckon we had about Ooh. nearly six of them under there. All right on it. Put your money on the field. Woo! <laughs> that is flying. So our first sub two minutes of the night, and maybe first ever for some of these guys, are right around that two minute to 2.02 PB mark. And Fitzy just tags them all through. He's crazy. I think he's run about a 150 dead before. Yeah. But uh, maybe even maybe even faster than that. But... Um Season's best, 202 we, we had listed with Fitzy, so go through in a 157, unreal. And bringing really the field strong. with him as well. Mm, That's so really good. Strong. We love those milestones. Man of the people, clearly. Drag a couple through for that sub two mark. <laughs> it's always special. So women's C, 800 on deck next. And 11 entered into this one. And like this previous race, and we saw how quick that was, these women are only separated by about 1.3 seconds in terms of PBs. So it should be a very close affair. 223s, 224s. So we we'll see, we'll always see that first lap go through. And well, I reckon should, it should be 70, but it won't be. I'm going to say 68. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm going to go 68. Or slow, 72, 73. We, we, love, we know in between. Yeah, yeah. We love banking time in an eight. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you've got to stash it. And oh, I might go out for a weather check and a... Um, Have a gaze. Because it, it looks to me there. like there's no rain anymore, but I've been wrong before. It does. I'm going to back you in. I don't think... I'm looking at the puddles around the track more specifically, and it looks like it's okay. It's our women's C800 on the line now. Mm. And we are away. So interesting to see who gets the best start. I reckon it might be Backer. Sandy Backer being a really good competitor for a little while now. I think she might be towards the middle of the track or got a different singlet on. So we'll have to wait and see. It's our box hill athlete in the middle of it. I think that's Kurti Arn. She's going to make her way towards the front of this as she can Ooh, get there. This is a thick pack. 
Yeah, it is probably the biggest, uh, biggest pack run that we've seen in 800 so far as they bunch up around the 200 metre mark. All athletes except for uh, Poppy Scott Dalish, who's just hanging on the back, and even she gets up on the heels of the rest of our athletes. So they're giving each other absolutely nothing through this first 250 metres. It's actually Matty Boyd on the rail there coming out of Wellington. So I don't think Sinead Backer is actually in this race, the number one hip owner. And she will not compete, but it is Sienna Curtian just right on the outside there of Matty Boyd trying to get through the inside on a door that won't open, I believe is by a pew. So forced to run wide for a lot of that first lap is Scar Scarlett Southern and now she gets her way to the front so 70 seconds so they might actually do this even split here it's Scarlett Southern now just trying to lead them out a little bit looking really comfortable in the process of it and now the rest of this thick pack mix starts to move there's still plenty of athletes in the mix and they're only going to encourage each other to up the pace over the last 300 meters it's not strong out no one's in no man's land or no woman's land everyone is running as a team as a pack and the pack is getting stronger and faster as a vet cordy another leader fifth lead change in this 800 meters so far is starting to string everyone out as she gets a gain a lead of about two or three meters on by Pu from mornington as they round the discus cage on the back straight. 150 metres to go, Mitch. So it's a vet Cordy. She's got five metres on them at the moment. Pew just starting to slip back a little bit and starting to make her way around there is our athlete out of Box Hill. So that is going to be Curdy Arn. So Curdy Arn, she featured prominently through the first 200 metres. She's going to get right on the shoulder here of Cordy. So Cordy on the inside, Curdy Arn on the outside. It's going to be experience versus expertise on the track. And it is going to be Sienna Curdy Arn who just gets the better of it. Watch the clock too. 221, 222, 223. Oh, plenty of PBs. 2.25. And that is your closest race of the evening, I think. <laughs> yeah. Apart from that dip yeah. on the line from, well, <laughs> from the men's B race. Yeah. E race. That was it was good. It was pretty good, was pretty good. good. Matty Boyd, strong finish as well. Wow. Sienna Curtian just goes right around the outside and another case biding your time perfectly and striking when you need to. Yeah, we have had some races tonight. Obviously we've had 16 of them so far. <laughs> 16? 16, right? Well, yeah, we're getting there. Time flies when you yeah, have Yeah, you'll be on the track soon before you I know. know. <laughs> oh, that's so exciting. That is very, very exciting as we... So we focus it now on the next race. As Mick goes out for a bit of a conditions report and a sausage run. As we now have our men's on the track, our C. That's right. We're just absolutely cranking through these 800s. And these will be quite fast. So we've got a couple of athletes who have broken that magical two-minute marker according to their PBs. It's Ned Tyrell of St. Kevin's. It's Ryan Gillespie, unattached. And it's Simon Glendenning of Mentone. That's a familiar name down here at Milers Club. So Simon Glendenning. The third fastest into this, and there is literally 1.3 seconds that supposedly separate this field. So as we do start to get up into the faster races, obviously the times become far less stretched out in terms of PBs. But this men's C800 metres is on the track right now. And I always enjoy trying to make a tip before the race, so I am going to go with Ned Tyrell of St. Kevin's. Don't know why. It's just the feeling. Men's seat. And we're racing. So let's see who can get towards the front first. These men are going to try and string themselves out nicely. The first one to drop to the back is Zach Granger. So he's going to spot his compatriots. Plenty of room. And on the outside, I think it's going to be Josh Logan or maybe even Oscar O'Connor. So it could be O'Connor of those Doncaster yellow silks. He's going to make his way towards the rail if he can. And doing his best to try and keep him out in the process is Charles Lee. So Lee now drops back. He must have heard my name and got nervous. It's 26 seconds through the first 200 metres. And leaning it out here at the moment is O'Connor. So Oscar O'Connor, the next one to try and take out the rest of this pack is Kirk Shanahan. And behind him there nicely is Ned Tyrrell. So O'Connor not wasting any time to let his competitors know just how fit he is. And it looks like he's in an all-out sprint down this home straight for the second last time. So it is going to be O'Connor. He's going to crash the clock here at about 56 seconds. So not messing around. He said, I've come here on a Thursday to run fast. So here he goes now. It's going to be Ryan Oscar O'Connor. 
He's leading him out. Shanahan there eating out the rest of the field. And here he comes now, Ned Tyrrell. So Tyrrell is done waiting around. He says, I want to go get Oscar O'Connor and I want to get him up this back straight. O'Connor done a lot of the work. Here comes Tyrrell. It's going to be hard for anybody to bridge this gap, but watch the middle of the field. You might try and see something special. So it's O'Connor. He's going to have to really dig deep and not give Tyrrell that inside rail, but he looks so smooth. 127 through that first 600 metres. 200 metres of pain left. It's O'Connor. Tyrrell. Watch the middle of this pack, as I mentioned. I think it might even be Simon Glenn Denning who might try and put himself into this race. So too on the inside there is Zach Granger. So have a look at this. The men's C800 metres comes down to the final 100 metres. It's Ned Tyrrell on the outside of him. is going to be Zach Granger. He's going to push late. He ducks. He weaves. He comes for Tyrrell. Granger, will he leave it too late? Ned Tyrrell, there's your winner. 157, 158. Oh, boy, and we got a big celebration there from none other than Liam T. I reckon that might be his first time under two minutes. Two minutes, point four was his PB, and he's dropped about a 158. So a huge race there. But it was all Ned Tyrrell. And I want to say, Mick, when you left, I said, I'm going to make a tip. I think it's Ned Tyrrell. One from one. One from one. You can check the tape. Check. No, start now. I just picked the winner. Lockie was here. He can back me up. Probably wasn't listening to me, though. He's probably thinking, why do I keep hiring this bloke? And why does he keep screaming at me? And the people at home. Look at that. Ned Tyrrell. Look at this. He was, mate, he ducked and weaved his way through that much traffic. He was just about on the eastern. Huge. Incredible. 158. First time under two minutes. Oh, you never forget that. Oh. <laughs> you never forget that. <laughs> Love that. So it is our women's B800. Just getting faster and faster. Tell you what the best thing about Miles Club is. Runs exactly the time. Yeah. <laughs> Never misses. Event 18, 7.18 p.m. time. 7.18 p.m. Actually amazing. Yeah. <laughs> like, think of all the track art. meets you've been to. Yeah. And just how often they run behind time. Miles Club? Never. Oh, no rain, cool breeze, ideal Oh, conditions. yeah, just, just send you, send you an update phenomenal. track side. Expecting live updates. I was actually going to get some food, but the line was too long, and the the races are just heating up. So I know you can't step yeah. away. <laughs> I'll go. I'll go hungry. Wait, feel free to step out of the box for the men's F fifteen hundred, though, if you want. Yeah. We'll just let that one go dark. Nah, I'm excited. Come for win. Women's B eight hundred eleven competitors in this one. Okay, if we're going to start it now, I'm going. Athlete with the Brooks. fastest seed time, Declan Tanner for me. All right, game on. Can I go two for... Oh, apparently. <laughs> yeah, one, one for one. one. <laughs> I didn't women. see the last one. Make their way around. I think it's going to be Lucy Delbridge of Collingwood in that white and black famous stripe. Uh, just sliding in behind is Declan Tanner oh, of Mornington, <laughs> Mornington Athletics Club. Ali Brooks looks the goods. She's, she's on the outside there. They're going to bunch right up here, so... Always starts fast, but they're always able to bring themselves back 30 seconds through the first 200 metres. So plenty of pace <laughs> on it here in the women's B800 metre. For a bunch of athletes uh, aiming to run under 2.15, 30 seconds for the first 200 is flying. Emily McLean from Glen Huntley throws herself in the mix as well. Delbridge, McLean. And that might be Erica Fountain from Ballerine. In third position, they are one, two, three, and Jong now. Jamie Wainwright of Mornington crashing the party as well. But Delbridge led from the start, going through in a 66 67. So we would have to even split or negative split to get a bunch of PBs here at Box Hill Myers Club. And unfortunately, my call in Declan Tanner is just sliding away back into the field. Similar to Ali Brooks there, so I don't think we've quite nailed this one, but they're still putting in solid performances as she's been leading from the start here, our athlete from Collingwood in Lucy Delbridge, and she's just going to try and take it out. Julie Fit of Box Hill on the outside there, and Emma De Jong behind there from Maccabee Athletics Club. But as we make our way around with 200 metres to go... Wainwright. Wainwright. Jamie Wainwright of Mornington Peninsula, 150 metres to go, gets up on the shoulder of Delbridge. Julie Fit is trying to join the party as well. Up on the podium, they're charging towards the finish line. Wainwright has waited, waited, waited. Now she goes bang. Julie Fit doing all she can on her home track to make sure it's not the Wainwright show. But Wainwright 
has taken the win. I'm going to call it 20, 30 wow. metres out in a time of 2.12, 2.13. Julie Fitz, strong finish as well. And we didn't even mention Isla Bradshaw, who comes from the clouds, running on clouds. Well, like <laughs> she got the shoes on. <laughs> wow, wait. So Jamie Wainwright, that's a PB. Nice little PB, tidy PB. And Julie Fit as well might have collected a couple of second PB as well. Um, okay, so neither of us called the winner there. No, but I'm one from two. so it's Yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. We're, I'm fine. I believe you. I've got one. So our women's B800 belongs to Mornington Peninsula. All right, all right, all right. Men's B. Okay. Coming up next. So three more 800 metre races for this evening. And then we have 20. 1,500 metres to look forward to. Yes! And you'll be, that's exciting. you'll be out of the commentary box for about four minutes and eight seconds or so ah, before, while you race, before you jump back in. Or, or 5.50, one of the two. I was just saying earlier, I've got no idea where I'm at. It's either... It's exciting, 10. I think. Yeah. When you're sort of like, if you haven't done an event for ages, <laughs> and you're sort of like... Yeah, I'm pumped. Yeah, it's like how... Oh, are you nervous? I'm not new nervous. I'm curious. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I just want to know excited? where I'm at. No, yeah. I'm interested. Yeah. I'm intrigued. This is just <laughs> a base test. Yeah, so I just need to go out and do it. And then when I finish, I'll just be like, oh, okay. Well, that's, that's what I'm I can't fail here. Yeah. I'm going to put my tip in early. Will Lindsay. I'm going to put my tip in early. You'll run 4.33. 4.33. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'm banking that. Straight in my back pocket. That goes. <laughs> So our men's B800, the times here are around Ooh, that Lindsay. 157 to 159. So two second buffer. Let's see how we get moving here. Right. I know Will Lindsay loves a quick start on the inside of the track, but I have a feeling that he might be beaten to it in the middle, and that's going to be Tommy Forster. Oh, James Taranto from um, Box Hill for me. Mm. Had a very good start to the year, I believe. So he's just going to work his way towards the middle of it. And I think on that outside there is going to be Tom Forster. So Forster going to push his way towards the rail. And he, that was very analytical. He just bided his, into the Mick Messini. He just picked <laughs> his route. Went 20 Waited, seconds waited, the waited. 200. Cut the tangents. And he's just going to lead out Oscar Maseraki. It was a very familiar name in the running circles around Melbourne. So Maseraki just going to get on the back of Oscar Armstrong. Peter Holland, John Kowal in the mix as well. The athletes from Doncaster and Casey Cardinia. From Olds of Arians, it is Sebastian Dunn and our athlete from Box Hill in James Taranto. They are your top six. It's anyone's race from here as they cruise through in 55 seconds for that first lap, setting themselves up nicely for around a 155, 156 that they are all seeking. So Jack Brown looking really comfortable leading out Oscar Maseraki. It'll be interesting to see who can be able to pick them up from there as they start to ramp their way up this back straight. So have a watch for all the flyers. You mentioned James Taranto there in the Box Hill Silks. He's going to try and push his way up there. John but the first Kowal. one to be able to do it is Kowal. So Kowal right on the shoulder there of the early race leader. He's got a little bit of work to do. He's about to see Taranto now just get on the shoulder of Maseraki. Kowal, he might have spent him a little bit early and Will Lindsay's going to try and launch from the back of this pack. But as we look at the 100 metre to go mark it is our early race leader doing a phenomenal job in Tom Forster uh, Bowen Bowen <laughs> so Bowen Bowen Kowal Taranto doing all he can on his home track but it's not going to be enough as Kowal is starting to feel the lactic and Bowen comes through in 153 if you don't mind <laughs> Kowal collapses Only 5 10 metres over the line you could see the lactic gain to him with that wow. 10, 20 metres to go. Finish. 153, 154 for a bunch of the athletes up the head of the field. Jack Bowen, he pretty much led from the start. Yeah, he went. Couldn't be challenged. Well, gun to tape? I'm always willing to call it. <laughs> gun and, to tape. Uh, still 1-0. One, one You've called one winner, apparently. Yeah. I've called none. <sighs> Not a bad pick with James Taranto, but just yeah. didn't have the wheels in the, in the final stages. Your two athletes have beaten my two athletes. Oh, okay. Nice if we want to do so it like that. If you're going head-to-head, -head, yeah. I'll give you two. <laughs> and that puts me back... Hold on. That puts me back to zero. <laughs> Wait a minute. I didn't do that deal very well. Women's eight. The oh, fastest yeah. of the night. Bring it on. And our fastest runner, Sinead Landon. Ooh, and there is... A bit of a spread in the PBs here, so it might be sort of a race of two. Sinead Landon. Mc 
Malika McLeod, I was about to say Michaela, but Malika McLeod from South Australia, the athlete on screen in lane three, has a tidy PB of 209. Rochelle Kennedy of Western Athletics. She's quite a strong runner as well. She ran the 1500 at Zadapec last week. Davina Smith from New South Wales. So a few interstate athletes, or a couple of interstate athletes in this race. And then a few athletes around the 214, 212 mark. Claudia Carter, Kiara Flavel, Bridget Humphrey and Honor Tobin. So a few familiar names to Miles Club. A couple of names who run, raced Zadapec in the 1500 last week. Who's your pick, Mitch? It's a hard one because I think these interstate athletes are obviously going to be quite quick. I think you... I mean, Shanae Landon's always hard to beat. She's a very tough competitor. Uh, Bridget Humphrey as well. I'm going to go... I'm going to go Kiara Flavel to run really fast, but I'm going to say Shanae Landon wins it. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to go Ruffy okay. in, uh, in Rochelle Kennedy. Oh, that would be... If you pick this one, game <laughs> over. He's a roughie, but uh, or actually, I'll tell you what makes me nervous: the seed time is two ten point zero zero. So Sue sort of just had a stab of what she reckons she'll run to throw up the dart. I like it though because then it could be really quick. Yeah, let's go, Rochelle Kennedy. I like sick it. Of my, sick of my home club. Yeah, got to stick with your mighty, mighty Western A's. Peter Fortune athlete, I believe. Good pedigree. Good coach. We'll see. We will see. It's definitely going to be racing too, though. You'll see. Might be might be a little bit of a pack early, but I'd suspect that, that pack was sort of split um, after a couple of hundred metres. We'll see how it plays out, eh? It's going to be interesting. No dashing for the cash, just dashing for pride and PBs. That's it. The A race, you just want to be the A race yeah. champ. Fastest of the night. So we're underway. Let's see who gets out quickly. Rochelle Kennedy is typically a pretty fast starter, so let's see whether or not she can get there. I think she's going to have a few athletes on the outside of her. One of them in particular is going to be Kiara Flavel, I think, who might try and get there yes. immediately. Claudia Carter on the inside of her as now Rochelle starts to make her way up this back straight. As you said, she's going to run very, very fast. Malika, Malika McLeod as well. She's, and Rochelle Kennedy, my pick early on, is finding herself in the rails, in a nice little position actually, sitting in third position. But leading out to Vena Smith of New South Wales, Flavel and Kennedy. So Smith, Flavel, Kennedy, are you one, two, three? As we said, it's going to be a race in two. But so far, the train has a few uh, evenly spaced carriages out. Yeah, it certainly does. They're spotting each other. I say this a lot, but plenty of room, which is hard to get sometimes in the 800 metres. So as they make their way down this home straight Landon. for the second last time, there isn't too much in it. It's going to be our New South Wales athlete there in Davina Smith, who's going to lead this one out. Kennedy just pushes her way on the inside of Flavelle there and not too far away, Sinead Landon. So about a 62 on the clock, and it is still going to be our athlete in Davina Smith from New South Wales leading out Rochelle Kennedy. Mixed tip at the moment. Kiara Flavelle just slipping back a little bit in third and it's going to be Sinead Landon just starting to creep her way right up on the shoulder of our third place getter but still leaning it down the back straight is all Davina Smith and Rochelle Ooh. Kennedy just biding her time. Keep your eye on Landon, Mitch's pick and the highest seeded athlete in this race. She is in third position and closing strong but Smith still ahead of the field and Kennedy has had the sit for all of this race. Is she waiting or is she just trying to hold on? The last 150 metres will tell Watch land and watch for Laval. That gap is just extending. Kennedy and Smith at the head of the field. They are doing all they can. Smith may just be too strong as Flavel charges with 100 metres to go. Landon, the pedigree of Landon. Smith extending her lead 20 metres, 30 metres. She's going to take the win. 207, 208. And Rochelle Kennedy, my early pick, coming in for a strong second. So neither has picked it once again. Well, we just missed it, but what a great performance there from Davina Smith. Again, might have looked a little bit shot with 100 metres to go, but found the next length and looked super comfortable in doing it. So Davina Smith takes that one out. Rochelle Kennedy, a great Strong start run, there. strong yeah. run, and faster than that 2 or 210 that she quoted early. Mm. Um, and Landon tried all, all she could to, to, uh, to close strong, but uh, couldn't quite do it. Was she was the obvious finish. pick, but um, to say, she <laughs> finished really strong in that last 50 meters, but maybe just spotted a little bit too much room to be able to really Sweet. launch herself towards the front. That last 20 meters replay, very quick. So 208. 
Ooh. just on that 2.10 mark for the rest of the three. In our women's A, 800, the winner, their interstate competitor in Davina Smith. Very strong finish. As we turn our attention now to the men's A, 800, and do not be surprised, Jack Lunn in the middle of this field has two of his training partners on his outside shoulder. He, um, right on the outside of the track. So I would imagine we might be chasing a very quick time here. He's got to be, got to be unbackable as a favourite. Yeah. <laughs> he's about a dollar oh five, I would say. But you never know. We've got some fast athletes in here. Luke Major stepping up. Adam Pike always usually pretty competitive. So too is uh, Rupi Cleminger. So I think it's going to be... Uh, a good race, but Jack Lund with a 146 next to his name is certainly the one to watch. He's in the middle of the track. He's got the St. Kevin stripes on and 400 metre hurdling national champion Connor Fry on the outside is going to be his pacemaker early. And let's see how fast they go. He's checking his watch after 100 metres, see if he is on the pace. So he won the 1,500 metres at the Zatapec, Jack Lund. He stepped up. He got over the top of Will Lewis. And now he goes back to his pet distance in the 800. And he looks so smooth. He just tucks in beautifully behind Connor Fry there. And they get a nice strung out effect to go with it. And it's Jack Lund who's going to lead out the field behind the pacemaker. His win in the Zatapec 1,500 metres gives us confidence that he's fit. Because we definitely know he's quick. Yeah. And all he has to do is sit on these teammates heels right now and as soon as he disappears all of a sudden he's going to be left with a five meter lead on the rest of the field well so 52 seconds through the first 400 so certainly on pace and jamie harrison of collingwood he's just going to try and get dragged through he's a 149 athlete himself so he knows the pedigree of jack lunn is now connor fry steps off and it's jack lunn you mentioned he'd have a five meter lead you didn't say it would be <laughs> 10 so 250 <laughs> meters to go it is going to be jack lunn who's lending it out and behind him there jamie harrison might get the benefit 200 meters to go and it's 1.18 on the clock. So Lunn extending his lead. 20, 30. Oh, Harrison isn't done yet. He's do doing all the best he can to close in these final stages. Luke Major, his teammate from the Collingwood Athletics Club, leading the rest of them. But it is Lunn. We said he was unbackable favourite. And he's showing us why. Ooh. And look at the clock. 144, 145 as it counts down. 147 Whoa. as he crosses the line. It's quick. Wow. Wee. How about Harrison as well? He's gone about a 148. That That's a PB. huge as well. Huge from Harrison to hang on. What a start to the year for Jack Lund. A 47. Harrison, 48. That's exciting. Coming off that win at Zadapec as well is a um, couple of good opening races from Lund. He's fit. He is fit. And that is a dangerous man heading into <laughs> summer. That is a dangerous man. Benefited a bit of a European summer this year. Amazing world champs coming up next year in Budapest. Maybe we'll oh, yeah. see it back on that plane to Europe. Joining joining our strong 800-meter uh, Australian runners that we have at the moment. Coming out of the Fast 8 track club, Justin Rinaldi. Doing some phenomenal work. And Steve Fabris track side as well. So have a look at that. Harrison looks so smooth as well in that Collingwood kit in second place. He's... One to watch this year. I, I'll be honest, I, I haven't heard too much about a man from Collingwood, um, Jamie Harrison. Adam Pike in the uh, you know, unattached for Bankstown kit. What do you know? Maybe he's moved. Maybe he's moved to Bankstown. Yeah, maybe he's <laughs> moved. I saw him at the Australian Mile Champs in that Bankstown thing. Yeah, thought, That's okay. Interesting. Yeah, but well, you would, say he's, you would say he's moved if he's running that singlet. <laughs> a fair inclination, he may live yeah. in Sydney. I'm not sure, well, thanks, but I'm uh, I'm no detective. I'm not a smart man, but <laughs> all right, might just be. Might have a break for uh, for a few minutes, as we said. The the Miles Club always runs the time, and 7:38 is the time for our next event, the men's. Well, I've got a silly question. Do you still have to check in for Miles Club? Um. Yeah, I think you do. At the tent in the middle oh, of the track? Yeah, there we go. Yep. Tent I might have to make my way down and make sure I don't miss it. Yeah, collect your... Uh, Get me... Yep, do your, do your thing. Do what you have to do. Make it real. I'll be back in a few minutes. But what an 800 metres we just saw.
So what were you just saying, Mitch? James Lund broke the yeah the Victorian Lund Master Milers Club record. One forty-seven. We should have hyped six. should have hyped it a little bit more. We knew it was quick. I we didn't realise the significance. Yeah, how are we meant to know that for sure? You know. <laughs> so you're saying, don't blame us because why would we know? He uh, one forty-seven six. He's beaten the old record by point zero one. Ooh, and collected five hundred bucks, I believe, as well. Yeah, five hundred smackies. I saw Fabs down there claiming a hundred of it already, so it's yeah. four hundred pretty quick. Management fees. Yeah, <laughs> four hundred. Twenty percent. That's steep. quickly. Or is it? I don't know. <laughs> so first of our fifteen hundred meters, the men's N. What do you, Mitch? Men's F. N isn't too far away from F in the alphabet. It's not far at all. <laughs> Same thing, isn't it? I reckon. It's our men's. N for Nitro. Nitro. R.I.P. How good. <laughs> Missed that. <laughs> oh, Nitro. What's the actual... You know that as the actual alphabet where it's like A for Alpha, B for Beta, whatever. Gamma. Yeah, what's the N? Anyway, so <laughs> the event is on the track. Um, <laughs> yeah. oh, come on. I don't know why I thought you'd know that. I don't know why I thought you'd know that. My mum tells me what it is all the time. That she's a police officer. She'd be so dis... Mum, if you were watching, which one would be rogue, but two, if you are watching, I'm apologising to you that I don't know what the N is. Anyway, they make their way through the first 200 metres of the first 1,500 metre of the night. And it is going to be Jonathan Mansour of Melbourne University just spreading the field a little bit. Mitchie Parks going to lead him through there in second place. And his teammate, not far behind, and Harry Lynn, is going to be in third position. So out in front. No hesitation to get out in front either. Are you talking about the phonetic alphabet? Yes. Like um, Oscar, Charlie. Yep. Like that. Tango. Sort of tango. Yep. November. November! <laughs> End for November. There you go. So it is... Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta, Echo, etc., etc. November. I should know that. Jonathan Mansour leads him through the first 400 metres of this November. 1,500. <laughs> now, Williamstown athletes... Oh, you started a trend now. Yeah, I'm... Shit. I'm, I'm going to start to really rip it. 
Too bad I forgot what M was already, but yeah. <laughs> that'll have to. Do. That's your that's your job now. Yeah, you know what the M is, Mike. Damn, Mitch. Say Mitch. Yeah. <laughs> the Mitch. No, it's my name, not your name. Wait, it's yours. Mine. Oh yeah, you're Mike. <laughs> my race. Oh, I was just thinking of you as Mick. <laughs> Mick, Mitch, Nick, November. It's all Mike, the same. Pike. As it's Jonathan Mansour of Melbourne University, he gapped the field quite early and he's just managed to maintain that distance all the way through. So Mansour wasting no time to put his foot down with authority. As our Williamstown boys just going to bring through the rest of this pack. And as I say that now, moving around the outside, doesn't want to spot too much room is Nan Curvis. Jesse Nan Curvis, famous Ballarat, what? <laughs> famous Ballarat YCW name. You know, Shane Nankervis. Wonder if it's any relation. Got to be. <laughs> so the Nank gets right around the front. Just going to try and chase down Mansour. And as they make their way up this back straight for one of the last few times, here comes the Nank. He's going to work his way up just a little bit. Mansour, he did put his foot down early, but he's going to have to really dig his heels in now. That was a good one. I didn't mind that. Nank. Just goes right around Mansour. He says, if you want to come get it, Mansour is now going to have to try and find a gear that he didn't know existed. And it's Mitchie Parks behind him there for Williamstown, who's going to try and bring his compatriot through. But at the moment, it is the Nank, the Tank, leading it out. Nank, you're on a nickname basis. Yep. <laughs> Your mates are watching. Nank, the Tank. <laughs> Nank so the tank. Tank. Frank, that's Frank, yeah. the Tank. It's Fra <laughs> <laughs> Frankie, but no, the Nank. <laughs> Richmond hero. Now oh. becomes a Box Hill legend. Do you realise this This was on? We're live? Oh. Oh, boy. Nah, I'm joking. We knew. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Uh-oh. The Nank. 400 metres to go. Jesse Nankervis. 3.34 strikes the clock. Have a look at this. It's Sleepy. Michael Sleep of the Deneen Runners. He's going to make his way around there. He's going to try and chase down the Nank. With 350 metres to go, Sleepy, one of the favourites of the Deneen Runner stables, he's going to creep his way up the back straight. But the Nank is certainly going to make him work for it. And he is grimacing just that little bit, the Nank. So maybe these three behind him can work together. And I think the Nank's compatriot, and that's going to be Rex Brennan, might be the one to try and peg it back with Sleepy. Nank the Tank. Nank the Tank. Nank the Tank. 200 metres to go. I don't know about you, Mitch, but I think uh, I'm going to call it. Can't be beaten. Wow. Don't <laughs> I've been wrong in the past. Him. Do I've been not wrong in the past. And curse him. Don't count out the sleep man. So <laughs> Nank the sleepy. Tank versus Michael Sleep. Here we go. It's going to be a battle of the ages in the November 1500. It's the Tank. He's led it from about 600 metres. Here tank. comes the tank Sleepy, though. Tank. He might have left it a little bit late. The Nank, though, he's going to become the King of Ballarat. And he's going to take it home here in the November 1500. 450, Sleepy 451. Woo. Hello. Coming through now is going to be Rex Brennan. And right behind him there is Harry Lynn. None of these athletes have gone under five minutes so far in their well, running careers. <laughs> They've go. never done there it. There we go. No one has never done it. You were searching there. Five of them have done it so far. We see a swagger of athletes coming through some PBs. Kai Davenport there collecting a PB. Aaron Bourne, who oh, are probably right on PB pace there at a 5.12. And the athletes flood through in this first of our 20. That's 1,500 right. metres for the night. 20. It's Chase Jardine comes down to the line now. Behind him there is Frank McNamara. And this is, let's just, as Frank now crashes the tape, Frank the Tank. Just want to give a massive shout out to Box Hill and Jeremy as well, in particular. Jeremy Griffiths, club president, who has dropped off two sausages, two soft drinks, a water, and two Stone and Wood Pacific Ales. Now, I have the race, so it looks like someone's going to have to drive Mick home. <laughs> Thank you very much to Jeremy. The men's November 1500 is done. It's getting closer to mine. <laughs> I'm very excited. And the men's Mike 1500 hits the track now. All standing on the line in that beautiful curved shape that we know so well. 19. 
of Victoria's finest 1500 metre runners stand on the line. The men's M1500. I could try and tell you all their names. I could try, but I won't. Because you can see them on your screen. And if you know a person, wave at your monitor. Hello, good luck. Beautiful night here at Box Hill. Look at this. The sun is out. No wind. Rain gone. Oh boy. Oh boy. This is very exciting. If you're Pete Chappell or Steve Deneen, I'd be very nervous. So here we go. Racing. We are away. Let's give it 200 metres. Let's just let these guys breathe for 200 metres because I reckon, looking at the early pace, it's going to be about a 31-second first 200. So there could be some sore bodies as they approach the first turn. Yep, that was about 15. So let's see whether or not they tone it down around the bend. The Stephen Ellinghouse bend, the most famous bends of the Box Hill Athletic Track, selling houses Australia. Prime real estate on that bend. 33 seconds. So they, slow, <laughs> so they slowed it down just a little bit. And now we can see the hip numbers. So leading it out here in the men's mic 1500 is William Charles. Our unattached athlete behind him there is Lucas Harris of Essendon. And now making his way around the shoulder is Jasper Bingle. Of our Box Hill athlete on the inside, which is Sajan Diol. And you'll know that Diol last name is one of the best photographers it comes down to every athletic event the Dioles last name Furious Quads Diol yeah <laughs> Jazz Jazz Furious Quads Furious Quads Diol out of curiosity has anyone ever seen the quads I've never actually seen these said Furious Quads are they Jazz's quads I do Furious maybe he's taken a photo of Furious Quads and that's what people know him by it's a mystery. Tell you what, I reckon it was after Brett Robinson's Furious Quads. <laughs> <laughs> His quads are the most furious that some, I've seen. He's got some crazy Actually, quads. if you want to talk Furious Quads, yeah. Trey Williams. Yeah. Furious Quads. Trey Williams. Yeah. There's no way that man could wear pants. <laughs> no way. It's a good thing he lived in Queensland or he would have been really done for in Victoria. Anyway, enough about Trey Williams and his rugby playing habits now. We get our way down to this athletics track in the men's Mike 1500. We've got some young'uns teaching the old ones new twicks. Twix. Tricks. Twitch. Oh boy. Mitch. Oh, boy. <laughs> that coffee's really kicking in. Okay. Through 700 metres, our early race leader in William Charles is going to remain that way. On his shoulder is Lucas Harris. On the outside of him is going to be our man from Mentone. I believe that's going to be Oliver Scott in the one, two, three position as we maybe see a little bit of movement on the outside. Times of around 4.53, 4.53 to 4 or 5.04. So about 10 seconds separating the seed times of the field. They should be looking to click off about 1.18 or so per lap. And that's what the whole field has just gone through. So they're all setting themselves up well for a PB if they maintain the pace that they're setting right now. But the third lap is always that hardest lap in 1,500 metres. Remember that for your race later on this evening, Mitch. I'll need that. I so really a bit will. for that tough, tough third lap. Anyone can run two laps, call an 800. Yeah. But that's not what you're doing a 1500 for. That is not what you, you step on the line of a 1500 for. A ship is safe in the harbour. I'm scared. I'm starting to get nervous. There's it. This, I'm flabbergasted. We've got beers, I'm, we've got chocolates, I know. sausages. What do I have to race? <laughs> and a late scratching from the men's no <laughs> i'm still in there as our three men here are just showing us how to run a 1500 i'm taking notes lads and on the outside Ooh. there oh straight through the middle straight up the high diddle diddle is our man from mentone and that's ollie scott so he sees the bell it. says front of the race is where i need to be so scott's going to lead out jasper bingle watch our man in fourth here in the black singlet oh damn there's three of them in black singlet <laughs> the fastest one in the black singlet look at this he's come from the clouds he is absolutely flying around this bend. Sub 450s for the lads, I reckon. Particularly, ooh, I reckon that is Rody Whelan out the front of the field, if our hip numbers are correct. He was charging. That's a gap of about ooh, 30 metres or so, if you can't see the camera angle right now. And our athlete from Mentone, we thought he was going all right, but it is yeah. Whelan, who's just been waiting, 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 and go, oh, one lap yeah. to go. Is that what the bell means? Oh, we have to run now. Oh, yeah. okay. 
So Brody, he's even taking a look on the inside of his shoulder. He goes, oh my God, maybe this is longer than 400 metres. But <laughs> Whelan, I think he's done enough to clear out enough airspace that he could almost park the jet and just park it into the garage at the moment. So Whelan takes one more little quick glance around the inside shoulder, but he will take out your men's Mike 1500. And it is our man from Mentone still in second, although we've got some real fresh kickers coming down the home straight. So watch the clock. 437, 38, 39, 40. Give him a 440 PB. there for PB. Great racing. PB from the lot of them. 454 was the fastest time that any of them have run before this evening. And we've had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 go under that. Home of PBs. Even our athlete here in James Lynn, who came in about 12th, collected himself a tidy little eight-second PB. Wowee. Yeah, wowee indeed. That was a real... Yeah. Sometimes wowee is just the perfect thing to say. Wowee. That was incredible. Um, do you anyway. have any insight <laughs> into... <laughs> yeah. anyway. oh, I thought, I thought <laughs> you were done. Remember that crazy guy saying. <laughs> Who are you talking to me? <laughs> no, no, just... just um, runner's Paradise. Yep. Marquee on the back straight. Any insight? Um, I, know, I you, believe... You think we'd have notes, but... Yeah, I believe... Um, it is Runner's Paradise, I think. So Just, if it's Runner's, to you, what is Runner's Paradise? What would your running paradise be? Let's go oh, off that. Oh, okay. Let's really launch off the business name. Great runners business, by the paradise. way. Love their work. Um, retire. <laughs> Lockie's gone yeah. retired. So not running. <laughs> oh, boy. My Runner's Paradise Wait. is not running anymore. Right now, that sounds like <laughs> paradise. <laughs> um, oh, my boy. Runner's Paradise, probably like nice run with a group of mates on... On Sunday? holidays, like not oh, it Sunday. Doesn't matter. Everyone goes on about this Sunday run, but I'm not about it. No, I'm not about I'm it. Sunday run on a Saturday, yeah, yeah. Long run on Saturday. That's and just like, go. well, my favourite run is um, like along the surf coast, just yeah. the undulating hills, looking at the ocean. That's my runner's run. paradise with few yeah. few others. You know, two or three guys to keep you company. I like that. All girls. That's beautiful, yeah. People, people just two else. or three people to keep your company. That's my Runner's Paradise. Yeah. So maybe Runner's Paradise is a running travel company. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. Or if it's not, I think we have a chat off there. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've just broken the code. <laughs> anyway, it's our women's Foxtrot 1500. Oh, you didn't, you didn't even look that one up. I didn't you didn't look, look it up. up. I'm on. Thanks, Mum. <laughs> so you, know, you know that you're going to be in the men's Foxtrot yeah. 1500 in about ooh, one hour and eight minutes. Oh, boy. That's very exciting. And <laughs> we're up at some point. <laughs> um, so our women's box drop 1500. <laughs> They've given each other a lot of nice spacing here through the first 200 metres. And our Box Hill athlete, the hometown competitor, is going to lead him out. Millicent Fraser from the hometown track. And Saskia Klotz from St. Kevin's Aya 1-2. They're leading the field around. There's, there's a bit of a thick pack going on. Fraser is... Well, showing everyone else in the pack that she knows her way around the 400-metre loop that we're uh, fixated on tonight here at Box Hill. Certainly does. A lot of left turns, I believe, out there <laughs> on the course tonight. <laughs> Don't worry. Don't worry, everyone. I'll take the lead. <laughs> yeah. I'll show you where to go. I'll show you the I've course. I've done this one a few times. Well, you go left twice? Yeah, left twice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and one how more, many times? One more turn? Uh, yeah, four times. No, no, a bit yeah, less than four just times. Just a couple. Yeah. Just follow me. More Don't than ask two. any questions. I'll yeah. lead you in the right direction. Yeah, yeah. Make, sh make sure you keep up, though, she says. Yeah. She says, as I'm five metres ahead, I thought you were following me. So <laughs> Fraser, she's going to try and push him through about 1.22, I reckon, on the clock there. So he now starts to thickens up, up a little bit now. Yeah, so the pack starts to get girthy. And uh, Kate Seabold from Boydington leading the way. <laughs> As the pack, as the athlete. <laughs> okay, I'm good. Okay, so as the pack now just starts to break up a little bit, it's our Mornington Peninsula athlete who's going to lead them out. As we saw our early race leader there in Kate. No, it's Kate, Kate Seabolt at the front. So Kate Seabolt now at the front, just extending away from this pack a little bit and, and trying to. Put her foot on the accelerator and get them moving. Only one athlete's going to go with them, but as I say that now, our Essendon competitor, I think in Ruby Ellis maybe, is going to be the one to try and lead this secondary connecting pack through. And now making her way to the front is Chloe Phelan. Phelan. 
according to Tim. Yeah. I'll back Tim in. So, yeah, Tim knows all the names. Yeah. Back so we're, <laughs> we're just trying our best here. So Kate Seabold, Coey Phelan running exactly 3.5 metres per bend. <laughs> longer than Seabold on her inside, having to do more work to keep up. Here's and she analytics. just tucks into the heels of Seabold. Bit of a tactical move there. Well, it's smart. And you it's don't like have to do too much, but you know someone's there. And that can be a bit rattling when you're that athlete on the inside. But now, Phelan just says, nah, I'll take it from here. And Phelan trying to extend the lead on the rest of the pack. Alice, I reckon, is bridging that gap to Seabold from Mornington. As we see a bit of picture on the screen. So 600 metres to go. Phelan, Seabold. And Seabold. Alice, are you one, two, three? I wouldn't be surprised, maybe, if she can just hold on through this next 200. See a good kick out of her. But Phelan's looking really strong. Have seen Kate Seabold around the traps for many years on the cross-country scene. Not a stranger to the track, but has strength in those legs. So, as you said, wouldn't be surprised if she can hold on for a respectable performance and may even close strong in this last lap. And we'll see if Chloe Phelan can do the same thing as they collect the bell. One lap to go. Alice crossing the line now with one lap to go. Jasmine O'Reilly from Western Athletics sitting in fourth position, as she does has done for most of the race so far, and brings a bunch of athletes with her. So it's Phelan leading it out. She just seems to continue to extend away. Seabold not willing to call her off just yet. But it's going to take a fair bit of work with 300 metres to go. If there's a feeling she bided her time really well, she executed it beautifully, and now she's on her way to a PB if she can continue at this rate. So 200 metres to go now. It is all Chloe Phelan of Williamstown. Has a look at the clock, and that's 4.32 with 200 metres to go. So Phelan just going to try and go to the Jets now. She is 45 to 50 metres ahead of Seabold, so she has an unassailable lead. I'll go with the Mick Massini, call it early, and cross your <laughs> fingers. So it is Phelan. She's still leading it out as she's out in front of Seabold, but behind her there is a contingent of about four women who are going to try and compete for that third position. But your winner of this women's Foxtrot F Calling it early. Meters, Calling I think it early, Mitch. will be Phelan. <laughs> Barring a catastrophe, it's going to be Chloe Phelan, who has a 5.26 to her name. Not anymore. She's got a 5.13 to her name now. So Huge. Chloe Phelan. How about it? A Seabold now is going to have to hold off a fast finishing Saskia Klotz, who comes Klotz. through for a third. She collects a 15 second PB. So a lot of PBs out here as well. Still hitting the line now is Jasmine Orielli, who goes 25 seconds inside of her PB. So PBs everywhere out here. This is exciting. It's a fast track tonight. <laughs> Ooh, I can feel it. So you see the rest Olivia of our women come through. Pick and bottom, eight second PB for her. Mulquaney, PB for about five or so. Our Spicer Track Club athlete. And check out the, uh, if our camera pans momentarily, check out our crowd that we're developing at Box Hill. We're saying Picking everyone's up. under the umbrellas earlier on, but now, uh, now everyone's gathering on that famous hill along the back straight to watch all the action near that 1,500-metre start line. Well, there's rumours circulating around the track down there. That Stewie McSween is going to jump in and pace the men's F1500. <laughs> I do see him down there. Who started those rumours? Ah, uh, well, I mean, that's <laughs> irrelevant. So men's L, 1500 metres. Lima? Am I making this up now? Lima? Men's Lima, 1,500 metres. Let's keep it going. Lima, good. Just looked it up. Lockie's confirmed. Confirmed with Google. Lima. And we have an athlete in the NN running kit. Red shorts and all. Well, I think it's Nike trail shorts and the NN running singlet. Love it. Curious. Curious to see the performance. The 20 athletes towing the line for this men's Lima, 1,500 metres. Lima? Men's L, if you know your phonetic alphabet. 
I guessed Lima. <laughs> and Don't then Locke said, yes, it's Lima. And then I checked Google and it's Lima. So that's... I don't know whether that's real. So, like yeah. I, I, I want to believe it's real. So I'm going to say that that story is real. In the Lima 1500. That's a cool one. Lima? Who, yeah. Who came up Mike's with all this better. stuff? Yeah, Mike. <laughs> yeah. Well, Mike might be the best one, actually. Can yeah. give it? Foxtrot's pretty cool. There's a couple of really cool ones in there. Anyway. Freddy Barrett Judd yeah. <laughs> leads a field around the first... 100, 150, and soon to be 200 metres as our athlete from Box Hill, Justin Jeffrey, sits on his shoulder just waiting for his opportunity to lead the field around. So they're pushing him well wide at the moment. They're just about happy to run out in lane three if it means they get a good position in this race. Some of our younger competitors are the ones who have to cop the brunt of being fairly wide in this 1500, but as they go through this first 300 metres, no, it's for Joshy Field now gets himself into a good spot, but moving quite nicely. Noah Torello, Justin Jeffrey, only one, two, and they've gapped the field just a little bit, but there's a thick pack behind them. They're just waiting, working their way together. So they go through that first lap in about 72 seconds, so setting them up for about a 4.30 if they keep up that pace, but no one has run faster than a 4.44. In the field, as we know, that first lap is always, everyone gets a bit excited, a bit of adrenaline. Make sure that's not you in I about an hour's time, Mitch. I will be. <laughs> it will be. It's all about that third lap, mate. Remember that. I know. That's the scary part. It's our men Ooh. now start to gap a little bit further. I will actually, I'll say that it's starting to bridge in. Yeah, Just like that fractional amount. Of, thanks to our Glenn Huntley athlete who's trying to bridge that back. Doing a really good job, but he's got a bit of room behind him so nobody's opted to jump right on his back but they're certainly benefiting off the pace injection as these two out in front have not wavered yet they haven't changed it's Torello leading out our man in Justin Jeffrey right behind him there I like what Jeffrey is doing very very smart Torello's looking strong but Jeffrey just sitting on his heels saying well I'm going to run a good time anyway if I just sit why not just relax for now it's a smart tactic and in third position is Antonio Russo. He looks like just, an Antonio he too, does. doesn't he? he? He gives that real Antonio vibe. So Antonio is going to try and peg him back. 224, I think, there through the first 800 metres. And Russo, is, he's biding his time so well. It almost just seems like metre by metre he's starting to pick them up. But as I say that now, Torello maybe just starting to pick it up a little Ooh. bit. And Justin Jeffrey has not moved an inch from his outside shoulder. You've got to like Jeffrey at this point, 600 metres out. He's had the sit. Torello's been doing all the work. Although he looks strong, just oh. know, we're watching so many races like this, you know the way it ends. But um, I'm on Russo. Yeah, we're liking Russo. Russo and his moustache have got 500 <laughs> metres to go. There's power in those things. Yeah, and he's, he's moving the fastest in the field. I know Torello and Jeffrey are at the front of it. But uh, Russo has gained meterage. Well, he's like a thief in the night, Antonio Russo. Nobody knows that he's coming at the moment. These top two think it's all them. But Russo, right on the shoulder there of Jeffrey. He's pegged it back to two metres. He hears the bell. And he's going to be the one to try and sneak around, not just Jeffrey, but maybe even the race leader in Torello himself. So Russo latches onto these front two. Torello, Jeffrey's had enough. He's going to go on the shoulder too. He can feel Antonio behind him there. So Russo now creeping up. Jeffrey will get some sort of call on the back straight to go. It's time, big fella and he now goes bang so here we go now it's going to be Jeffrey Russo still in third do not discount Torello either and this final 200 meters is going to shape up to be a cracker Torello did all he can and I hope it's almost going to be enough but Jeffrey has been the smart runner he's just waited 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 but Russo we liked Russo from about a lap in He's just sitting on Torello's heels, but he needs to be sitting on Jeffrey's heels and pass him if he is going to get the ultimate prize in this men's Lima L 1500 metres. Oh. Torello, has he got a little breath of wind to finish with, or is Jeffrey going to sprint away and take out this men's L 1500 metres in a time of 227, if you don't mind? Wow. What a race. So we really thought Antonio Russo was going to. Get the best of him in that race. That's about an 18-second PB there for Jeffrey. Huge. That is monstrous. And Torello as well, collecting about a 20-second PB. So the Lima. Big run. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. That was a race. In the Lima. It was just building, building, building. Wasn't the way that I thought it would go. 
Okay. Men's K. Oh What's boy. K? Um, I know this. Do you really? Yeah. Um, K. Not grams, but... Kilos. Yeah, kilos. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was a weird <laughs> reason going koala, but <laughs> yeah. that wouldn't really make sense globally. Lima, koala. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's all animals, A lot of animals. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of animals. <laughs> Although I think it's lima, spelt Kilo. differently. Like L... <laughs> How else do you... Sp- like Mr. Lima, my year, year 12 Italian teacher. Oh, classic. Yeah. yeah he's a good man. <laughs> yeah. You know, that spelling as good opposed man. to Lima. Yeah. The like regular the, Lima? No, the African no, Mr. Animal. Lima. Yeah. yeah. You were there. Right? You were in my year 12 yeah. Italian class. Just like Russo. I'm starting to think Russo <laughs> taught it, actually. Yeah. He's actually just changed his name. So the men's K, Kilo. Kilo. 1500. K-I-L-O. I'm so sorry for people as that don't care Graham. about this alphabet. No, no. We're having fun. Fascinated now. <laughs> no. no. We're I reckon this we're will be fun. My, you will listen to us have fun. This will be my <laughs> last one, and then I'll I'll go warm up. Go and warm up. Oof. So excited! If if Ooh, people yeah. had to stop listening before I said warm up and just heard me go, that would have been really confusing. You've just gone and done a run through. These yeah. are portable headsets. Yeah, I was keen to do that. Lockie and I almost organised that microphone during the race. Oh, some interesting things. I thought about that doing that before. Like that'd be an interesting. Be. Yeah, that'd be fun. Oh, See, I'd have to. You'd have to have like the live. Um, beep. You'd have to have the live bleep going for me. I reckon you'd have to <laughs> pay someone to do that. We the, um, the back straight. Steve Monaghetti <laughs> did the city of surf mic'd up once, and I think he really? came like third. That's unbelievable. I could be completely wrong there, but do I think he. Cool ra- I think he sort be? of did it like as, you know, a bit of a fun sort of thing. Oh, yeah, I'll commentate. I'll wear the thing. I think, he, I think he was retired at that point, <laughs> but he gone. actually like did very well in the race. Could you imagine Monas, being... if you're listening, just uh, yeah. <laughs> let us know if confirm. there's any truth to yeah. that. Please feel free to confirm. <laughs> yeah. Imagine that. You're in the city to surf and you're like, I'm feeling pretty good in third and then like a retired Steve Monaghetti. Yeah. Like, yeah, boys, so I'm feeling pretty good. Uh, yeah. about how's, 305 how's pace. How's Heartbreak uh, Hill going, Steve? Yeah, it's going well. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't really picked it up yet, actually. Um, got to do a long run after this. So. <laughs> a retired we'll Steve Monaghetti. We'll see how we go. The thing about Steve Monaghetti is he's never retired. Yeah. <laughs> he's still breaking records. Yeah. Didn't he just break a 5K record? He did, he did. Thanks to, I don't want to mention him. <laughs> no, <Nah>, don't. <laughs> Someone Pierce. who paid. Yeah. <laughs> Nathan Nation. Nathan Pierce. He's <laughs> Melbourne running. <laughs> Kilo 1500 is underway. And I reckon it's going to be a fast opening 200. Unless... You always need one person to get to the front and hit the brakes immediately. Otherwise, it is just absolutely off its rocker. It's going to be our Mentone crew who do it. Always a little training group with uh, Williamstown's Jasper Gay spoiling the party. We love that. Love it when um, when training partners sort of get together and they look like they've sort of been planning this. Yeah. All right, you go to the front and I'll sit right on the shoulder. Yeah, but there's always one. Always one to spoil that party. I like that. Don't let them have it their own way. I appreciate that. As our contingent of Mentone is led out by Thomas Scott and his compatriot is going to be Matthew Bergen. And as we mentioned, it's Jasper Gay breaking up the party. So the third of the Mentones is Lockie Fulton, but Thomas Scott is leaning it out and Jasper Gay tucked in nicely behind him. So four thirty-fives is the best seed time of the field. And they go through that first lap in about seventy-one ish. So a seventy-two is four thirty pace. So not messing around. They're setting themselves up. Look at this move from the middle of the field. Glenn Huntley. Try and get. There's a a couple of them in this race. So we'll try and get Anthony Van Eaton, who's made that charge ahead of the training partners, Mentone boys in the uh, yellow kit with the black stripes. It's a strong push there. Not waiting around either. He's going to give them five metres of room to have a think about their actions. <laughs> you sit back in the pack and yeah. you think about you what you've think done. think about what you just yeah. let me do. <laughs> Jasper Gay is, uh, is responding though. He's not letting him make the easy moves. Van Eaton, his run about a billion miles club races, I reckon. is a, um, not, a a record not a Not a, a billion, record obviously, but is, club races. I should say he's a familiar name. He knows what uh, running <laughs> three and three-quarter laps he's is all about. Billion. No, no. He's got a billion. <laughs> you said it. It's true. He's, he's done every single one <laughs> and more. Yeah. So Van Eaton. He wasn't Jasper happy Gay. in the middle of that pack, was he? You just went bang. 
And Jasper Gay finds himself in second position again. So he's gone pretty even there, Van Eden. That was about a 2.23 through 800. He probably even went faster that lap, given that he was in the middle of the pack through 400. So he's going to lead out Jasper Gay. And it is our Mentone boys still on the inside of the rail. And old Zaverians getting on the outside there. And Cameron Marshall. I do like the way Jasper Gay is moving. He's, uh, he's the one athlete in the pack who has remained sold. Everyone's slightly faded back. Van Eden's pushed ahead. But Jasper Gay has showed his strength running solo for most of this race. Will it pay off in the final stages? Has Van Eaton gone too early? Or are there others sitting back in the pack just waiting, waiting to make their move? Well, I reckon they might be, but if they are... They might want to do it soon. Yeah. Because I have a feeling that Van Eaton and Jasper Gay are going to be kind of hard to claw down over this final 400. So 318, 320, he's got two seconds. Two seconds back to the pack. So it's very evenly split at the moment as Van Eaton. He saw his moment. He took it. Now can he finish it? He's about 40 metres in front of Jasper Gay, who's now just starting to get worked back from this pack. So we mentioned we might have some flyers in that pack. And now they start to show their hand. So it is Van Eaton still up this back straight for the final time. Jasper Gay, he's going to be clawed back, I think, by this pack, let out by Mentone. And Van Eaton, look at his face on the screen here. He is hurting at the moment. So he's throwing everything into this. 200 metres to go here for Anthony Van Eaton. He's a 435 at the moment, Van Eaton. I think he's going to run a big old PB here if he can. Jasper Gay, he's getting swallowed by the pack at the moment. It is all Mentone swarming him. I think Van Eaton's going to do enough to be able to win it. 100 metres to go. Mentone isn't going to die wondering. They're going to start to move their way through this final 100 metres. Van Eaton, when the arms and the legs stop, it's time to go to the heart and his is a ticking. It's Van Eaton. I think he's going to come down and take it. He's done enough and he will. 4.29. 4.30 for the first time. Lockin Fullerton came through for a second place there. But Anthony Van Eaton, how do you do? <laughs> 429 do you on the do clock. Indeed. What a performance. As he said, saw his moment and took it. Anthony Van Eaton. And we are up to the men's J. Ooh, J, 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 phonetic alphabet, J. Uh, Julia, Juliet, Romeo and. Romeo and Juliet. So the men's Juliet, 1,500 metres. Men's J, 1,500 metres. Event 27 of 41 for the evening here at the last Milers Club race of the year. Second of the season. And it's Eddie Franks from Aubrey, who's leading the way. And it's, I wouldn't say it's a pack of athletes. It's a train, one by one by one by one, strung out across the field. PBs of 4.30 up to 4.35. So it kind of makes sense that no one's 
leading the way by too much. No one's fallen off the pace yet because they have PBs within five seconds of each other. So is Frank's Angus Thomas from Chilwell just sitting in that second position. Everyone's sort of taking a sit on the person in front of them, just clipping the heels of the athlete in front and just waiting, 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 trying not to fall off the back and letting the athlete in front of them drag him around. So 4.30 is the fastest athlete in the field. And that's Dan Hopkins who has made his way into the first position. So he needs 72 seconds per lap to maintain that 4.30 pace. Every single race so far tonight, the winner has got a PB. Daniel Hopkins, Angus Thomas and Eddie Franks are your one, two, three. As Thomas makes his way into the lead. Getting a bit of an extended lead on Hopkins. Two laps in, in a time of 2.20, 222, 2.20, I call that a 2.24, so right on pace for that 4.30, 1,500 metres. In third position, Daniel, or fourth position, Daniel Venner. Sitting nice as well, but if you can't see the angle on screen, Angus Thomas getting a gap of about 10 to 15 metres on the rest of the field. Ooh, athlete from, ooh, in the red singlet. Unattached. That could be Jake Smith or Corey Harrop. And we'll see as they round the bend, but it's all Angus Thomas as he comes in to collect the bell lap. 400 and... 50 metres to go. Corey Harrop makes his way into second position. Only 10, 11, 12 metres behind Thomas. And he's got 400 metres to make up that gap. They have to go through with 300 metres to go in a 3.36. To give him a chance of breaking 4.30 for the first time. Thomas is in shape to do it. Harrop's in shape to do it. And the next three, four or five athletes in the pack are in shape to do it. 250 metres to go. Still lead of about 10 metres on the rest of the field, but they are all flooding in, lining up for their chance to take Thomas over the final 200. Kick home. Riley Shalito from Ballarat YCW makes his way into second position as he takes... Thomas, is he going to hold his lead? Shalito is running too strong. 100 metres to go. He goes bang. Shalito. Thomas, the athlete from Chilwell. Shalito, 425, 426, 427. We have five athletes. Six athletes go under the 430 mark for the very first time. Jake Smith, unattached, getting a PB. And John Ma from Box Hill Athletic Club rounding out the field in the men's J, 1,500 metres. And next on the track, we have our A races. Just while it's still light outside, while we're still able to get great vision of the athletes. Women's A, men's A, thrown into the middle of our 1,500 metre races for the evening. So the action is about to heat up even more here at Box Hill Athletics Club. Okay, women's A, 1,500 metres, 14 athletes on the start list. Madison King of Glen Huntley, Gabrielle Vincent of South Melbourne. 
Morgan Mitchell of Western Athletics. And as I look at the track, Gabrielle Vincent not on the track. So Madison King, Morgan Mitchell, Haley Whitstead of Albury, Catherine Dowie unattached, Brooke Williams, Albury, Rachel O'Brien, Wellington, Piper Gay, Williamstown, Tanasha Santosh, Glenn Huntley, Abigail Thomas, Western Athletics, Sophie O'Sullivan, who I can't see in the field, Vanessa Wilson, Old Scotch, Tully Rowe of Bendigo University, Matisse Lazari of Essendon, and how lucky are we to have Olympian Abby Coldwell pacing out the field, who is led by Morgan Mitchell, closely followed by a training partner, Piper Gay from Williamstown. So Morgan Mitchell running a strong race at the Zadapec 1500 metres last week. Getting some race experience and fitness over longer distance early in the season. We know as a seed and 400 metre athlete, bit of speed athlete who's tr transitioned to the 800 in the past few seasons. But early in the season, getting some fitness back over the 1500. And being towed around nicely by Abby Coldwell. That first lap in 67 seconds. He's heading towards about a 4.15. Morgan Mitchell's PB listed at a 4.18. Day still in Mitchell's shadows as she would be used to in training sessions down at the Newport Athletics track. Hayley Whitstead from Aubrey leading out Tanasha Santosh and the rest of the field. Here is Coldwell setting up the race nicely for... Mitchell and Gay, as they get a lead of about 15 metres ahead of the pack, led by Whitstead of Aubrey. So you know Caldwell's going to be metronomic in her approach in the pacing job. She's run in the low four minutes here at Myler's Club before. She knows what it's all about. Running a 4.15 shouldn't worry her too much, especially if it's only for a couple of laps. So going through that two laps in 2.16, so just slowing down a little bit. 68, so heading for once again, yeah, about that 2 or 4.16, 4.17 pace. So Mitchell leading around teammate Gay. Further back in the field, Whitstead. Catherine Dowie. And Tully Rowe are your next three, that little pack there that you can see in the bottom right corner of your screen. Morgan Mitchell doing what she can over the final 500 metres. It almost looks like Whitstead and the rest of the field is maybe bridging that gap. But I like the look of Piper Gay, who's just sitting in the shadow, just sitting so close. On Mitchell's heels, I'm surprised she hasn't been tripped up yet. 400 metres to go. Excited to see what Gay is going to do. Tully Rowe is lining up. Whitstead's lining up. Catherine Dowie is joining the party in third, fourth and fifth positions. It is Mitchell's race to lose. She has done all the work so far. Been led around the first two laps. She's done the third lap. On her own, Piper Gay sat in her heels. Whitstead has bridged that gap. It is now one, two, three, four, five. Oh, Vanessa Wilson of Old Scotch has found herself in fourth position. Can Morgan Mitchell's speed hold off the rest of the field over that past 200 metres? Will she have the early season fitness to so show that she's the Olympian that she is? Will Piper Gay's smart tactical running payoff or Will Whitstead charge through the last 100 metres as they all enter the front straight for the final time. Mitchell is going to put the burners on over teammates. She's led from the start and powers towards the finish line. Huge run by Mitchell. Finishing at 4.27. Piper Gay, great run. Being led around by Mitchell. And Whitstead as well. Smart race, smart race. So 
So Rachel O'Brien crossing the finish line now. And Abigail Thomas. So women's A, 1,500 metres, won by Olympian Morgan Mitchell. Great runs by Piper Gay and Hayley Whitstead, who we see on screen. Closing in 4.27, 4 As we get ready for the men's A, 1,500 metres. So, 14 athletes toe the line. Nathan Pierce of Western Athletics. Andre Waring finishing second in the Zatapec men's 10,000 metres last week. Charging towards the finish line. He'd be one of the favourites. Towing the line tonight, we have Ed Beischer from Old Scotch. Archie Noakes of Essen and Will Collins of Knox. Callum Burns of ACT. Riley Bryce. Tom Bowers, Jai Hadfield, Aidan Roberts, Tim Logan, Wolfgang Contranamesi, Jared Clifford and Finn Russell to round out the field of 14 in the men's A, 1,500 metres. As Lockie Hurd looks to be the pacemaker in this 1,500 metres. Athletes PBs ranging from a 3.41 for Andre Waring all the way out to a 3.52. So Andre, you would expect to sit on the heels of Lockie Hurd for as long as possible. And Jared Clifford sitting on his. He's run a 3.41 as well. Wolfgang Contramanesi broke a 1,000 metres. Age group record, Victorian record for the 1,000 metres at Collingwood Classic only a few weeks ago. So he's in a bit of form. As they strung out, Nathan Pierce, the ever reliable Nathan Pierce, is in the mix as well. He's sitting in fifth position as the pack just starts to split. So it's a race in two. Jai Hadfield and Will Collins. So it is a long train being spread out. Bit by bit, Nathan Pierce just starts to lose contact from the first four runners in Waring. Clifford, Contra Nemesi. And Collins. Uh, Hadfield, sorry. Hadfield, Collins and Pierce. Wearing, I'd expect her to fall off the pace pretty soon as he takes the boys through 1,000 metres in 2.30. So it's a race of four at the front of the field. Waring and Clifford have run 3.41. Contra Nemesi is the form junior, as is Hadfield, and they're doing their best to hang on, but there's a split at the front of the field. Waring charges ahead, he's showing his form from the recent 10,000 metres at Zatapec Clifford, an early race for him in the season, doing his best to nip at the heels of Waring Waring is going to show his strength can Clifford show his speed over the final stages a bit further back Hadfield trying to get up on the shoulder of Nemesi as he passes him so you're one, two, three Waring extending his lead. Clifford doesn't quite have the legs in his final stages. Hadfield, strong run in third. As the Messi just gets past for fifth. Waring charges towards the finish line, showing the form that he did at the recent Zatapak 10,000 metre championships. 
And he closed, going to close in a quick time. Just shy of a PB. 3.42, Clifford. Ooh, Riley Bryce. Huge run from Riley Bryce in third. Hadfield. Finn Russell closing strong as well. And to round out the field, Aidan Roberts of Essendon. Oh, some quick running here at the Milers Club tonight. 3.42. As we just heard Tim Crosby put in a bit of uh, perspective. That's the pace of a sub four minute mile. 3.42, 1,500 metres. And good. Oh, I'm going to call it a season opener for Jared Clifford. I could be wrong. Don't blame me if I am. <laughs> a strong run from Jared Clifford as well. You can see on camera closing pretty strong, but 3.42 for Andre Waring. Huge run. Even Finn Russell in the Olds of Arians kit. Closing about 3.49. He's happy with his run. So a few minutes up our sleeve here. The men's eye, 1,500 metres, will be next on the track. Okay, and we've got Abby Coldwell back on the track, pacing another race. Doing a bit of a training session tonight, by the looks of it. So these athletes have uh, similar PBs to what the women's A race did. So probably a um, reason for Abby Caldwell to be pacing again, although she's more than capable of running the 4.25 that the highest seeded athletes in this field have. So it will be interesting to see how many races Abby does pace. She still sort of gets the field through 1,000 metres a number of times. So club mates in Kane Rosita and Kane Hydro Clemmer. So Rosita and Hydro Clemmer leading the way just on the heels of Abby Caldwell. Going for that first lap in oh, 65 seconds. Did pretty hot pace. They want to run a 4.30. So the athlete from St. Kevin's in Cooper Provan. He's in the mix as well amongst Glen athlete, Glenn Huntley athletes. Andrew Lego from Mentone sitting in fourth position. He's used to longer distances, marathon running, etc. We'll see how his endurance and strength plays out in the final stages of this 1500. Okay, and the field gets strung out. There's no longer a pack sitting behind Coldwell. Here's Provan from St. Kevin's as Coldwell just steps off the track. Looks like she's doing a bunch of 800 metre reps tonight. And they're well ahead of their 425, 1500 metre pace. And there's Lego from Mentone. We see he's just starting to get up on the shoulder of these Glenn Huntley runners. As we said, he's got the strength and endurance to make his way slowly through the field.
Aju Klemmer. Just looks like he wants to pass Proven with the bell lap. Lego just on the heels of Hygel Klemmer. Proven putting the burners on. 300 metres to go. Looking like he wants it more than anyone else in the field. Pulling along the Glenn Huntley teammates. Lego doing his best to hang on. As we see Aiden Marasco from Doncaster joining the party in fourth position. And they are under PB pace. As they start to almost round the discus cage. Proven, he's been sitting in second position just behind Coldwell for those first two laps. He's been leading the rest of the field for the next one and a half. Can he do it for the final 100 metres? Proven, Heigel Klemmer, Rossiter. And our athlete from Doncaster, he's making a late run for it. Heigel Klemmer. He's been sitting, he's been waiting, and he takes the win in 4.17, 4.18, 4.19. The first four athletes getting five, six, seven second PBs. And now the rest of the field, the flood of athletes joining the PB party here at Box Hill in the men's eye, 1,500 metres, men's indigo, 1,500 metres, we should say, being forgetting that phonetic alphabet. So men's H, 1,500 metres, and we're getting ever so close to the men's F, 1,500 metres. We'll see co-commentator Mitch Dyer pull on the spikes for the first time in five years, he reckons. Why he chose a 1,500 metres, I'll never know. But he's excited to match up against, well, local hero Steve Deneen. So men's H, ooh, H, 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 Oscar, Charlie, Indigo, come on, Lock. what do we got, H, Hector, Hector, no, uh, all right, I'm going to have to look it up, Hotel, Hotel, cool, <laughs> men's H, 1500 metres, it's not as much fun with someone else on, on the mic, Lock's just looking at me blankly, nodding along. So Hector, <laughs> pulling this stream all together. Yeah, Locke, you're doing nothing. Mitch is out there warming up, racing. I'm commentating. You do. <laughs> if you've noticed the live stream progressively improving with their graphics, camera angles, infographics over the years, these all due to the man to my right, Lachlan Rainey. You can't see him. You can't hear him very often, but he is the man behind the magic here athletes exclusive so i'll not have anyone say a bad word about lachlan rayner is that all right lock thanks <laughs> so 18 starters in the men's h 1500 meters Step out. 
So event 31 for this evening. Can you believe it? Ten races to go, though. Last of our events, the men's B at 9.48 p.m. So strap in for another hour of entertainment here from the Box Hill Athletics track. And I like the way this Glenn Huntley athlete on the outside, William Howe, is going about it. Just running the smart line, not cutting in immediately. And uh, his maths is going to pay out <laughs> later on in the race. And a few Glenn Huntley athletes in the mix here. One of which is leading the field around. And he's joined by... Oh, we have Ethan Armstrong born. No, that's Jonathan Neithling of Essendon. Joined by Dane Gray at the head of the field. Nick Hershen joins the party as well, as does Ethan Armstrong born. And the lead keeps changing. I can't keep doing this. There is a swagger of athletes, a thick, thick pack making their way around the three and three quarter laps. Good luck, Mitch Dyer, as he takes off for his warm up. So Mitch Dyer, tune in for another 20 minutes to see a uh, see a man who hasn't raced in five years, hasn't worn spikes in five years, um, do his three and three quarter laps. So it'll be, you know, I can't wait to call. It's going to be a highlight of the evening for me. As we see, Jonathan Neithling. He is leading the way so far ahead of Nick Hershen of St. Stephen's and Ethan Armstrong born of Diamond Valley. Almost every athlete in this race times between 4.20 and 4.25. So probably looking around 70 or maybe 69 seconds per lap to get them in the realms of a PB this evening. They are helping each other out towards the front of the field as Ethan Armstrong born really wants to help out Neithling Armstrong born and Hershen they are your one two three in the mix as well as Angus Norman he's the athlete from Yarra Rangers in fourth James Lehay of Chilwell where well, they've gone through their first two laps well just under just under that 69 second per lap pace seeing themselves up nicely for about a 418 419 pb neithling hershen one our athlete from chilwell in lee hay and they're strung out like like they're doing 1K reps on a Tuesday afternoon. Just one by one by one. No argy-bargy yet. 500 metres to go. And Hershen, he's swinging his arms around like he wants to do something. Neithling, he's looking strong out there. The field. Looks like a marathon runner in a young man's body. Or I should say a young marathon runner's body. The young man's attitude. Hershen in second position, just waiting, waiting, waiting. I'm liking the way Lee Leahy of Chilwell is moving his way into third position with 300 metres to go. They are on pace to run a sub 420. Let's see how this last 300 metres plays out as Hershen is not running so smoothly. His arms are going everywhere, but he is running quickly. He is getting on the heels of Neithling. He is wanting to pass. Neithling is not wanting to let him. And that two or three metre gap is going to remain. He can't extend it. He can't bridge it. He can't make it smaller. The other one can't make it bigger. Neithling, Hershen, as they come into the straight, have a look at our athlete from Yarra Rangers in Angus Norman. He is charging towards the finish line. But is Neithling going to do enough to hang on? Norman is closing strong in his final stages. He's going to take out the win in his men's H. In time, 4.14. We're going to get so many athletes. Six, seven, almost nine or ten athletes under 4.20. Love to see how many PBs were earned in that race. Unreal. So what a race by Norman there. Just waiting, waiting, waiting. 
Neithling did all he could. He led for 1,485 metres. Just that last 1,500 metres. As we look to our women's E, 1,500 metres. So 16 athletes will toe the line for this one. As we see seed times ranging from 5.10 up to about a 5.25. You'd expect the athletes to be spread out by about 15 seconds, about 100 metres at the end of the race. <laughs> like the athlete in the middle of the field, she's so small that her bib has had to go, what do you call it, portrait instead of landscape on her back. A few athletes from, uh, from Essendon here, potentially from the same training squad, same coach, might help each other out in this race. So time, if any of them are looking to crack the five-minute barrier, tall ask, but such a milestone they'd be looking to go through in 80-second uh, laps. The 122.40, four minutes, and closing in a one-minute last 300. We might be a little bit off that, but we have seen some huge PBs so far at Myers Club tonight, so I wouldn't be surprised if we get it one or two breaking that five minute for the first time. Well, we are only two races away from our co-commentator Mitch Dyer running in the men's F 1500 metres. I cannot wait. As 16 nervous looking girls tow the line, we do have a pacer on the outside who's going to be towing the girls around, hopefully, in around those 80 second laps that we talked about. It is a contingent of Essendon athletes that are at the head of the field. That young athlete who had to wear, <laughs> wear her a bib. Portrait instead of landscape way, we can see, has made her way into the head of the field. That is Molly Bremner, the Spicer Track Club athlete. Sliding her way into second position. And a few others from the Essendon club. Joining the party at the front. I was going to say business at the back, just like a mullet, but it's all a party at the front, not too much business going on at the back. Or is it all business tonight here at Miles Club? Business of PBs. Molly Bremner, she's doing her best to hang on to the pace. And she's absolutely doing that. But as she does it, she's creating a bit of a gap on the rest of the field, who's led around by Priya Diol. So as we said, to break that uh, break that five minute barrier, whew, they're going for that first lap in 115. That is actually unbelievable. The rest of the, the whole pack is going through at five minute pace, which um, for a group of people who haven't broken five minutes before, hot pace to start with. To be keen to see. Now they go in the closing stages. Now there's a bit of chatter between the pacemaker and Molly Bremner out the front of the field. She's probably saying, we're going pretty quick here. I'm just going to slow down a bit, maybe. How are you going? <laughs> As they're almost running together like training partners. I like it. I like it. She's probably saying, how are you feeling? Because the rest of the pack's back there. I can keep up this pace if you want me to. I'm checking my watch again just to make sure we're not going too quick. But Molly Bremner doesn't seem to mind. And this is unreal. So two laps to go. The rest of our field led around by Alexis Sheed from Essendon. 
He's all Bremner out the front of the field, just on the heels of our pacemaker. They go for their first two laps. In oh, So that lap was a bit slower. That was more like 80 seconds for the lap, as opposed to 75 seconds for the first one. So Bremner putting herself in a great position. I think it's the marathon of Vanessa Wilson, who is our pacemaker. She knows how to run consistent laps. She'll have no trouble in holding this pace as she smiles to the crowd, to a coach, to her teammates, whoever it is on the side of the field, as she leads Molly Bremner around. I wonder how long she'll hold on for. So it's Molly Bremner versus the world. And the world is led by Alexa Sheed, who tows around the rest of the field. 500 metres to go. So she could go through in like a 4.50 closing time. She's running unbelievably. I think uh, I get the feeling our pacemaker just wants to tow around for the whole way, maybe. One lap to go in 3.40. So she's well and truly having five-minute pace. And um, then it's Alison Rogers and Olivia Beaton are in second and third position. And our pace is just saying, I'll keep going with you if you want me to. So four minutes through three laps. One lap to go or 300 metres to go. Bremner has to close last 300 in one minute, which is that five-minute pace. Rogers and Beaton in second and third. And the rest of the field strung out one by one by one by one by one. But our pacer is joining Bremner for the whole race. She just maybe so impressed at how she's going. She had to join her. Had to help her through the whole way. And why not? What a run. There's Vanessa Wilson, our pacer, doing a great job of bringing Bremner through. For the 1,500 metres, leading her to go for the last 100 metres, but also giving her a bit of space. Bremner's going to go under five minutes by the first time if she charges towards the finish line. It's getting close. It's getting close. Oh, how good. 4.59 from Bremner. Huge PB. And now the rest of the field closes in sub 5.10. The PBs for the next six or seven Ladies in this women's E1500 metres. What a great race. And Bremner with a, whew, with a 21 second PB, or 19 second PB. 19 second PB for Bremner. Huge, huge result. All right, and we're up to our men's G, 1,500 metres. G, G, G. I'm trying to think phonetic alphabet here. <sighs> no, I can't do it. G. Oscar, Charlie, Kilo, Lima. Golf. Golf. Okay, thanks a lot. Golf. I'll remember that. Actually, I probably won't. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> so 4.16s up to 4.20s. So 4.16, we're probably looking for about 67 seconds per lap. Um, they might try and bank a little bit of time early. Let's see as Mitch Dyer just runs across the screen. Because why not? And we've got 19, 19 competitors. That's why you see them strung right across the track around the bend as well. That is, um, 
Bit of a tricky thing sometimes here at Box Hill Athletics Club. The athletes in the first couple of lanes need to start around the bend, need to punch that first 20, 30, 40 metres out to try and get a bit of a clean start as the athletes sort of flood in all together over the first uh, 100 metres or so. And they are underway. Our athlete from oh, Nana Wadding trying to settle in behind the paces. That is Alan Vernal. Also our boys from Glen Huntley trying to join the party up there. These Lachlan Minara and Brady Ryan. So Vernal, Minara and Ryan, one, two, three. Now athlete from Williamstown in Finn Kane. Try and join them as well. There's a lot of jostling early on as they try to find their space. Try and settle in over this first lap. Two pacemakers, just in case the first one gets tired. Pace, who's going to pace the pacer? Oh, and Manara and Ryan are almost getting a bit impatient with their paces there. And going through that first lap in 60... Well, about 66 seconds. So pretty much on pace for a 4... Ooh, probably more a 4.12 there. Okay, and one pacer has already dropped off. Who's going to pace the pacer? So 400 metres for our first pacer. Maybe just getting a bit of training session in. There's Manara, Ryan, and Askar from... Doncaster, are you one, two, three, sitting behind the pacer, trying to chase a time of under 4.15, and he's given us 600 metres, okay. So Minara, Ryan, Askar, and Solomon, are you one, two, three, four, keep an eye on James Paproth as well, he is in fifth, but he is looking calm and smooth. Minara, Ryan, Askar, two laps down. And ooh, going through that first two laps in about 2.14. So still on pace for that 4.15. I'll need to do some work in this third lap to consolidate. Solomon looking good. Paproth looking good as well. The old Melbournean stripes in fourth. And keep your eye on Finn Kane from Williamstown as well. They're all lining up to take Manara down over this final 500 metres. They approach the bell lap. Manara just checking his watch, seeing what he's on for for a K, seeing what he has to do in the last 500 metres. Well, he just has to win. He just has to stay in front. The equation's pretty simple. Askar trying to make his way past Manara. And I said keep an eye on Joel Sol Solomon. Nara, Askar, Solomon. I'm liking Solomon. Who are you liking, Mitch? Oh, that's right. You're out on track. <laughs> He's Billy Mead from Bendigo that you can see in the red shorts just on camera there. He's lining up. The field's lining up. Solomon is lining up. He's made his way into second position on the heels of Manara. Manara's led from the start. Sitting behind his paces, doing the leading for the last, next two laps. Solomon is just waiting, is nipping at his heels. Is he going to do something in this last 100 metres? Has he been waiting, waiting for his time? And Solomon charges towards the finish line in a tidy, tidy time of 407, 408, 409. And how many athletes can we get under 415? It's almost the field. Collecting PBs. Yeah, there's about 12 or 13 athletes just collecting PBs there at the front of the field. This happened too many times tonight. Unreal. 
conditions out there. No wind. Slight, slight, slight. Little cool breeze. Take the edge off the humidity and heat that we've sort of had all day. Oh boy, oh boy. We're ready for the men's F 1500 metres. And uh, said we've been waiting for this race. Got um, got Mitch Dyer, who is our co-commentator. You might have heard his voice at the Zatapak race. He's on screen now in the yellow with the yellow head, yellow haircut. Talking to mate in Pete Chapel. I think Pete ran uh, ran. The first sub-13 minute around the tan in gumboots the other day. So he's, um, there you go, retired athlete, <laughs> athlete exclusive commentator, retired athlete Mitch Dyer. He doesn't have a clue what he's going to run tonight. He, um, maybe 4.10, maybe 4.15, maybe 4.30. Who knows? Who knows? But he's going to do it in super shoes, not spikes. He's got his eyes on Steve Deneen, veteran of Victorian and Australian athletics, everyone's favourite osteopath, who's in the Box Hill uniform in the middle of the field. Um, so I think Mitch really just has his eyes on Steve Deneen, just taking him down. So I don't know if anyone else at home is showing interest in, in this battle, but yeah, Mitch Dyer in the blue shorts and the white singlet try and be inconspicuous as possible. He claims to be a, uh, a Box Hill Athletics Club tragic, but I don't see his colours on right now, so a um, bit concerning. But looks like we've got Lockie Hurd as well on the outside of the field in the Eastern uh, Eastern Track Club colours. His, um, his squad with Gav Burren. So um, Lockie Hurd's going to be a pacer today. And he'll probably be looking to go around in about 65, 66 second laps. A couple of athletes from Aubrey have made their way down in Caleb Gilbert and Alec Franks. Mitch Dyer just settling in in the middle of the field and surprise, surprise, Steve Deneen nipping at his heels. But let's forget about these has-beens in the middle of the field and turn our attention to the front. We have Max Luke of Collingwood. Joined by Kaylin Luong of Box Hill and Caleb Gilbert of Aubrey. So Gilbert, Luong, and Mitchell Waring, unattached or of rising track club, lining up behind Hurd. Mitch Dyer finding himself somewhere in the middle of the field, just hoping to get through um, the three and three quarter laps uninjured, I guess. I'm um, liking the way Luong goes about his business. They go through their first lap in ooh, about 66 seconds. It's so around on pace for about a 4.12, 4.15. So they'll be running an even paced race thus far, as we said a few times tonight. It's all about that third lap. And they have formed a bit of a thick pack up the front of the field. Mitch Dye just getting a bit of a, uh, a gap on Deneen, which you'll love, but we know Deneen has the endurance in his legs and he'll close strong. But Luong at the front of the field. He's now joined by Jackson Eden of Bendigo. Slides his way into second position. And Caleb Gilbert of Aubrey. They are one, two, three. Mitchell Waring. And Hamish Donoghue of Sandringham is joining up the front of the field. So Luong, Eden, Donoghue. They are one, two, three. And Eden has made his way into first position. They go for their first laps in, yeah, still around that 4.12 pace. Going through in about 2.14. Eden, Luong, Donahue, Mitch Dyer, if you don't mind, making his way into fifth position. And he knows that we're going to be talking about him. He said goodbye to Steve Deneen for now. And I say for now because Deneen has just taken about three athletes as I click my fingers and he's got Mitch Dyer in his sights and Mitch Dyer has Eden in his sights. He's just sitting in fifth position 
waiting, waiting, and I hope he doesn't win. Oh, my God, I hope he doesn't win. <laughs> to need on the heels of Mitch Dyer, Eden, Luong, and Waring. They are one, two, three for now. Donahue from Sandringham. And it is Dyer making his way through the field, collecting the bell with Tanid on his heels. This is unreal. This is my favourite. Eden, Luong, Waring from the Rising Track Club. I know he's been doing his speed work as Mitch Dyer in the white singlet. He's the undertouched athlete currently residing in Mackay, doing his best over the last round, which means he doesn't know what a time he's going to run. I guess he'll find out in about 40 seconds' time. Steve Deneen has just passed with gusto, and he doesn't like it. He's got a bullseye on his back, wearing. He's been taken by Deneen. Deneen says, show me the finish line. Forget about Mitch. I want the overall win. Deneen wearing Donahue and Dyer doing all he can, but he's dying in the ass right now. <laughs> wearing and, Di- and Deneen. Donahue, it's a sprint to the finish. Deneen doesn't have the legs, doesn't have the speed. Donahue charging towards the finish. He does. Followed by wearing Deneen, huge run, huge time. And Mitch Dyer. Pretty impressive run. Pretty impressive run. 4.09 from Dyer. And a tidy time in about the four O's from Deneen. I think uh, I think Mitch will be happy with that. We'll find out in about, I don't know, five to ten minutes times when Mitch wanders up. Donahue, great run at the head of the field. And once again, no one had a PB or a season's best at faster than 4.13 um, before tonight. And yeah, we had about seven or eight athletes doing it. So, yeah, well done, Mitch. That was, I'm sure you'd be pretty happy with that. In the hokers, if you don't mind. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. That was a lot, a lot of fun. Steve Deneen. Huge fish. Now he needs to get back up to the commentary box. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is we're, that enough time off? We're paying him by the half hour. We'll see <laughs> if we can listen in. And it turns out the strength, the man strength of, uh, of Deneen gets over the... Um, the youthfulness of, of the retired Mitch Dyer. Sorry, we can't hear him, but... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven events to go in this evening. So Men's E up next as we relive that finish. Donahue charging towards the finish line, collecting himself with a ooh, 11 or 12 second PB. Men's E, Echo, I know this, phonetic alphabet. Men's Echo, 1,500 metres, 19 athletes, and it looks like it too. It looks like there's about 25 athletes in this race. And we do have a pacemaker. Lucky enough to have a pacemaker. And once again, the times aren't too spread. 4.09 to 4.12. I'm probably looking for 65s. 65, 60, or probably 66s actually. 64s being a four minute 1500. Yeah, we'll go, we'll go 66s for a uh, for a 408, which a lot of the boys in this race would be happy with. But who knows? Going by tonight's results, we could very well get someone breaking four minutes in this. We've been seeing six, seven, eight, nine second PBs all night. And you see, Lockie Heard, um, you know, second pacemaker, leading the field around. I think our pacemaker's been sponsored by the Eastern Track Club tonight, and Gav Burren. So thanks for that. And so we've had Abby Caldwell, Lockie Heard, doing a lot of pacing work tonight. Always much appreciated and always big supporters of the Victorian Miles Club events. And we do see the athlete from Knox in at Genso. I see tucking in behind, I believe, his training mates. As they go through the first 600 metres. 
Joshua Johnston. No, that's Benjamin Stevens of Eureka. But Benjamin Stevens, Joshua Asi, or Jenso Asi. And Charlie Kybird of Mornington. They are your one, two, three. Charlie Kybird leading around the, uh, the train of athletes further back in the pack. But it is Stevens and Asi. Your one, two. Stevens looking so comfortable. Bit of C just nipping at his heels. Almost wanted a pass. I don't reckon any minute he's going to. 900 metres down, 600 metres to go. Ooh, okay, and Stevens just wants to feel comfortable up the front of the field. Stevens, a C. Now, athlete from Chilwell in Jacob Sprunt. He's in third position and really filling that gap between the two packs with the bell lap upon us. Stevens, a C. Keep your eye on Sprunt in third position. Oh, and they are heading for a sub four minute. 1500 at the head of the field. All they have to do is close in about 50 seconds, which they would have done a hundred times in training. Stevens, a C. Sprunt still in that third position, further back in the field, and he's charging. But it seems Stevens and a C have too much of a gap, 20, 30 metres ahead of the field. A C. He's going for that sub four, in spite of the fact that he's only ever run a 409. With 120 metres to go, he's dragging Stevens along. Is it about the win? It's probably more about the time at this stage. So I see Stevens trying to join the sub four for the first time. Coglin. Oh, I see. And once again, how many athletes do we have under four? Are we sure his clock is right? It is unreal. Almost the whole field under 4.09. That is outrageous. How are the conditions here tonight at Box Hill? Oh, my God. Huge run. Let's see, under four minutes for the first time. Stevens slightly over. And Coughlin. He just waited, waited, waited. Probably more endurance man, Coglin. Now he's a 1,500 metre man, 401. Whew. Women's D, 1,500 metres. Six races to go. Women's and men's D, C and B, 1,500 metres. D, D in the phonetic alphabet. Delta, of course. You're better than this at me, like. Delta. Charlie is C, Bravo, and Alpha. We've got it for the rest of this evening. Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta, Echo, etc., etc. So 18 athletes on the line. Um, five minutes. Point zero zero. Point nine. Is the fastest of these athletes in Phoebe Lonsdale of Bendigo University. Um, but as the races have been going so far this evening, well, they're probably heading for like a 4.50, I'm guessing, because just breaking five isn't going to be uh, isn't going to be in keeping with the trend for this evening. Thanks, 
five minute pace is one minute 20 per lap. So 120, 240, four minutes for the first one, two and three laps. So I'll keep an eye on the clock as they progress through this race, see how they're tracking against that five minute barrier that they're all looking to break for the first time ever or this season. couple of our Box Hill athletes up the head of the field. Showing the rest of them how it's done on their home track. So that's Emily Davies and Amelia Morton. So as we said, one minute 20 per lap will do just fine as they just go through in about one minute and 13 seconds for that first lap. So Amelia Morton, Emily Davies. Oh, Emily Davies and Amelia Morton are your one, two. Followed by an athlete from Wellington. In third. Ada Hill is the athlete from Wellington. And Eliza LaPere in fifth. Or should I say Greta Ashley in second. So Davies, Morden, Ashley, LaPere, Hill. They're all in the mix at the head of the field, but they're all in the mix to run a PB. What we want to see is the whole field go through in under two minutes and 40 seconds for that first two laps, which would mean they're on track to break five minutes for the first time ever or first time this season. As they go through in, yeah, 2.37 for the whole field. So they're all on track to break five. And Emily Davies is the one who's going to lead them through. Amelia Morden just up on the shoulder and passing Davies for the first time this race. Davies hasn't been leading. Ada Hill from Wellington sitting in third position, just sitting on someone's heels. Well, sitting on Davies' heels still. LaPere and Ashley of Ballarat YCW in the red crop tops. You'll see in fourth and fifth, it's anyone's win, it's anyone's race with 500 metres to go. But we do know that pace is on. Morton, Davies, Hill, LaPere making her way into third, possibly second position. We haven't even mentioned Olivia da Costa Alves, who's joining her teammate in Davies in third, second position. What we want to see is how many athletes can go through that first three laps in about four minutes or under to give them a chance of breaking five. And we can see the field bar the last maybe two athletes go through in under four minutes. And it looks like, ooh, is that Greta Ashley? No, it's LaPere, Eliza LaPere. Has bridged a gap of about 10 metres on the rest of the field. Michaela Young from Collingwood doing her best to chase. And she's getting up on the heels and doesn't even sit on the heels. Gets up on her shoulder, on her heels, and passes with gusto. Hundred and fifty meters to go. So that's Neve Tabbott, who has just waited, 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 and gone bang. And she gets a lead of about forty meters in the space of eighty meters. And she's going to charge towards the finish line in a huge time of four forty-eight, smashing her PB. Lapere. Davies, Morton, 
They one, two, three, four. And we see oh, the field bar four going under five for the first time. The field bar two going under 505 for the first time. Sharon Fushura from Solomon Islands going equal PB at 505. That was about 12 or 13 athletes going under five minutes for the first time. Massive. So men's D, 1,500 metres. So fifth or sixth last race of the evening, men's D, 1,500 metres. And we have Lockie Hurd leading out of field again, pacing the boys through. Toby Griffith of Box Hill sliding himself in just behind Lockie Hurd in second. Um, times at about 4.05 to 4.08, splitting the field in this. So you should see the pack start to thicken up as the boys settle. Logan Tickle of South Bendigo sitting in second and Ashley Cohen of Victorian Cross Country League sliding his way into third. So probably, I mean, if they want to break four minutes, they're looking at 64 seconds per lap. If we're going by the trend of this evening, um, we're looking for huge PBs tonight, and they've gone through that first lap in about 61, 62 seconds. So they're setting themselves up to run that sub four for the very first time. It's Harvey Anderson from Knox, who's leading the rest of the field. But there is that gap that we can see widening. As Lockie Hurd drags around the two athletes at the head of the field in Toby Griffith and Logan Tickle. It'll be interesting to see what the pack can do. Are they going to claw back the peloton in the later stages? Because the pace is well and truly on for Griffith and Tickle. And he's doing an outstanding job pacing tonight. Tickle looking to get up. Oh, he's maybe getting up. I was going to say get up on the shoulders of, but he's on the heels of Griffith. And the pack's gone through in under under 208, so on four minute pace. So look at Tickle in the red. Griffith in the Box Hill uniform on his inside. And then there's the pack who's also trying to get under four for the first time as Tickle just gets up on the shoulder of Griffith. But Griffith's going to make him work for it. He's going to make him run longer, as we know, run an extra few metres every bend you run on the outside of the track, one lane out. So he's going to hold the inside lane, inside line, Griffith. Tickles on the outside as they approach one lap to go. I reckon the rest of the pack is closing in on him. Tickles doing a lot more work on the outside. He's got to make a decision soon. Does he want to sit on Griffith's heels and wait? Does he want to go? and charge ahead. 
He's sitting on the heels for now. Let's see how the last stage of this race play out as we see our athlete from Knox in what well, could be Harvey Anderson get up on the heel. Well, not even on the heels. He just passes a lot of them, makes his way into the lead. And it looks like whew, a gap of made 20 metres up over 30 metres on the field. How many athletes are we going to get under four minutes in this race? As they enter the straight, hitting the 340, 341, 342. Keep our eyes on the clock and we'll see the flood of athletes charging towards the finish line. Griffith and Tickle have done all the work for most of the race. We see the boy from Knox in Matthew Patton going 357, 358, 359. So the first three or four athletes. Griffith, Patton, maybe Tickle getting under four, if not smack bang on, collecting PBs anyway. So women's C, 1,500 metres, towing the line. So no pacemaker in this race. All the athletes have run under five minutes before. Fastest of which has gone hmm, 4.51. So probably looking at laps of about 1.17 or so. Again, a time around 4.45. So 1.16, 1.17, and 4.45, which all the field will be pretty, pretty happy with that. So it's Lucy Jones leading the way from Chelsea Tickle, Logan's sister, I'm guessing, from the previous race. Nissa Males from Williamstown. Tall figure in second. So Jones, Tickle, Males. Erin Mariner from Ringwood in the mix as well. And Emma Wadley is the Glenn Huntley athlete that you see on the screen. Jones, Males, Mariner. Alex Schultz is there to join teammate 
Males as well ahead of the field. The athlete from Williamstown. So the pack is thickened up. They haven't really strung out like they have in some of the previous races. And PBs are strung out by about, oh, about 10 seconds or so, but it doesn't look like it in the way that the race is shaping up. There's lots of toing and froing. Jones is leading the way. She's doing all the work. Males and Mariner are sitting nicely on her heels. And Celeste debug to my from Mentone. She's come from nowhere. The athlete in the yellow singlet, although she doesn't want to do all the work herself. As they go through the first two laps in a 2.36. So, yeah, they're on, pa on pace to run low 450s, if not just sub. Nissa Males makes her way to the front of the field. She's joined by Matilda Lestrange. Few lead changes so far. Okay, now Williamstown athletes doing what they can at the head of the field. Alexandra Schultz and Nissa Males kind of sitting a little bit wide across the track. Trying to lead the way, help each other out a little bit. Now, athlete from Collingwood is now Someone we haven't mentioned, Ruby Callanan. Or should I say, Natasha Gertler is the athlete from Collingwood who's made her way into second position behind Nissa Males. And let's keep an eye on the time. We have about a minute to close this last 300 metres, a little bit less. Might be a bit of a challenge apart from the first two or three athletes in this race Nissa Males she's done a lot of the work and just gets passed by Matilda Lestrange Jones wants a piece of it again Lucy Jones from Ballarat and we see Natasha Gertler she's making her way into second position but that gap is just increasing from Jones she's led a lot of the race early just sat in in the last lap or so and made a very very smart move as she tries to extend her lead and she's about to be the first one to enter that front straight. Jones, Gertler, Lestrange, Males, and Debug Tamai. But Jones, look at her charge away. Check out the clock, 4.43, 4.44. She's going to work well under 4.50. As does Gertler and Lestrange. And he said a flood of athletes coming in. All under five minutes. It's a very tired girls track side. So three races to go for the evening. 38 events down, if you can believe it. Three to go. But there are three good ones. Men's C, women's B and men's B, 1,500 metres. So men's C, men's Charlie, 1,500. You can get away with it. You're in, so what should it be? No, what should it be? Times between 3.58... A number of these athletes posted a 358 before. Up to 405. So 4 minute 1500. It's about 64 seconds per lap. So these guys will be looking to run 62s, 63s. To sort of run around that. 355, 356. On your mark. And Lockie Heard doing a pacing job again. Yeah. 
Okay, and everyone's settling in. As we said, the, uh, the spread of times isn't all that wide. Only three or four seconds separating the field. that first lap in oh, well 58 59 seconds by the looks of it so she's hitting more for a 345 rather than a <laughs> rather than a 355 so hot pace to start with let's see how many of them can hold on to it as lucky heard is dragging them around once again he's done a lot of the pacing so far tonight and doing a great job at it So Brad Hall, followed by Archie Coldo and Evander Scott. They are your one, two, three. Hall, Co Coldo and Scott. Bart Leeton, the gun junior in fourth position, leading around the pack of athletes to follow. So go through this first two laps Ooh, in round a 202. So once again, still around that 348, 350. Um, 1500 metre pace Hall, Coldo, Scott at the head of the field would be very very happy with that Angus Hickinson of South Australia he's in fourth position, he's trying to make his way up onto the heels of Evander Scott in third and he's towing around along the rest of the field to try and make it one long train again it was a race in two, now it's Almost one long, long train of athletes, and it can be anyone's race. The boys from Mornington are joining the pack as well. Tom McFarlane, the athlete from Glen Huntley in the pale blue singlet, doing what he can. And as they collect the bell, it is Archie Coldo, followed by Vander Scott and Hinksman from South Australia. They are your one, two, three that you see on picture right now. Bradley Hall just slipping into fourth position. Caldo, Scott, I like the look of Hinksman from South Australia. He's tucked in just behind Caldo, the athlete from Wendaree. Kalen Goldsmith from Mornington doing what he can to get himself up into the podium position of this men's B race. Don't know if he's going to have enough time to get there. As we see Evander Scott of Chilwell extending his lead, extending the gap. Ahead of Coldo and Hinksman. Kalen Goldsmith, Tom McFarlane closing strong, but not strong enough to catch Evander Scott of Chilwell. who's going to run a time of 3.53. Goldsmith, McFarlane, Coldo closing strong as well. Big times in low 3.50s, low to mid 3.50s for a lot of these athletes. Yeah, two races to go, the men's and women's B, 1,500 metres.
Thanks, brother. On your mark. And they're underway in the women's B, 1,500 metres. 14, although doesn't look like 14 starters. Looks like they're 11 or 12 starters in this B, 1,500 metres. Maybe some of the athletes have gone to bed being 9.42 p.m. That's what you have to do to get through 41 races after work on a Thursday night here at Box Hill. But it's just due to the popularity of the Milers Club these days with record numbers attending tonight's event. And we see our athletes in the Doncaster athletes, Shania Murray. Oh, sorry, that's Feek Vanderkamp leading the way from Lucy Cleveland from Western Athletics and Tess Rhodes of Chilwell. Rachel White joins the party as well. She's in the mix. And times of oh, 4.40 to 4.50. So be looking to sort of run about those 73, 74 second laps. And, um, of course, they go through in a 71. So setting themselves up. But it's worked so far. Everyone, pretty much every race tonight we've seen has run a massive PB from the winner, from the first four, five, six, seven athletes, actually. So Fiki Vanderkamp leading them around. Lucy Cleveland and Shania Murray is in the mix as well. That's the athlete from Diamond Valley in the green, lime green crop top. Rachel White from Doncaster in the yellow singlet is in the mix. But it's a pretty thick pack. And Mia Rue made her way to the head of the field. Tess Rhodes joining her and Lucy Cleveland still in the front part of that field as well. Rachel White, but check out Mia Rue. She must have just been waiting, 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 and um, she's ready to run fast tonight. She's well under the 4.40 pace that she's put as her seed time. Let's see how many we can have join her. Cleveland, White, they're still on that pace. Cushy Diol as well. She's a season runner here at Milers Club. But Mia Rue has got a gap. If you can't see it on screen properly, it's a, probably a gap of about 30, maybe probably 30 metres ahead of the rest of the field. And she's still got 550 metres to go. There is a bit of a pack forming though. We know if there's a breakaway in cycling, the peloton does usually catch. But let's see if it's the case tonight because Mia Rui is looking pretty, pretty good. So Cleveland, White, Diol, they're all lining up, twining. Fiki Vanderkamp, they're all lining up as they collect the bell, but it is Mia's, Mia Rui's race to lose. 3.24, 3.25, 3.26 going through with one lap to go. And she's still got that lead of about, ooh, could be starting to bridge it now. Could be down to about 20 or so metres. <laughs> yeah, we just lost a bit of lighting in the back straight here at Box Hill. It looks bright on screen, but it's not here at the track, I can guarantee you that. And they are eroding away that lead that Mia Roo has. And who is that? That is Lara Skana from Essendon, Cushy Diol, Lucy Cleveland. She's been there all race, and she's going to have a go as well. She's going to drag along Rachel White. As we said, it's Mia Roo's race to lose. And Cushy Diol, she is way as she's gone. Bang, Lucy Cleveland. She's going to do the best she can to make it hers. The lead has changed about eight times in this race so far. But it is Diol who will finish in front in 4.37. A few athletes under 4.40 for the first time. I like the way Cushy Diol sat, sat, sat and made a late charge. Lucy Cleveland 
She was probably in the top three the whole race. Mia Roo, gutsy, gutsy run. This is weird. And I just realised there we see Josephine Borthwick of Collingwood on the, just on the outside of our screen, finishing in third or fourth position. They didn't even call a race. She made a late charge for the win, uh, for the for third. Now, Michael, Box Hill might be known for its uh, home of the PBs, but doesn't have the best lighting. <laughs> <laughs> and we seem to have lost one on the back straight, so that is not us. One of the lights did go out. <laughs> we can hear a buzzing. We're not sure if you're hearing that at home. Sorry about that if you are. We do have one race to go. I'll leave you in Michael's hands for the last race. Home of the PBs and, well, most of the time home of not bad track lighting. Most of our athletics tracks don't have immaculate track lighting. Um, but, yeah, unfortunately, we've lost one on the back straight. But, hey, at least we're not running in it. As we can see, 16 athletes towing the line now. A few familiar names at Miles Club Races. And Lockie Hurd, he's doing an absolute workout tonight. He's on the track again to do another pacing job. So 355s is the fastest set. Or 352 from Dale Carroll. Peter Green running a 353. That's the fastest anyone's gone in this race. So 60... Uh, 62 seconds would see him with a 353. I've got a feeling that they want to go a bit faster than that tonight. So we might be looking at 60, 61s. Probably 61s, I would say. Would be pretty comfortable for a few at the front of the field here. 61, 202, 303. And closing in about a 47, 48. Be pretty nice. From our commentary box here, we have almost no sight to the uh, to the start line. <laughs> At least we're sort of looking on the same screen that you are, and we can sort of see see the figures that you can see in front of us. But we're uh, we're going to be playing a bit of a guessing game here, as we call the athletes as they make their way around the dark side of the track. Let's call it. But as we said, at least we're not uh, at least we're not racing in it. So last race of this evening. Pace runners on your mark. Men's B, 1,500 metres underway. And Lockie Heard once again. Uh, he joins Andre Waring, the winner of our men's A race for a bit of pacing duties. Isaac Bibley, a previous or regular commentator as part of the Athletics exclusive team making his way into second position just behind Remy Williams from Doncaster Archie Noakes is joining him at the head of the field or should I say Charles Barrett so Williams Barrett Bibley Charlie Rogers, Ethan McMinimi. And he's a race of the youthful athletes. A bunch of 16, 17, 18 year olds putting the burners on and seeing how quick they can go around three and three quarter laps. And as we see, we're probably looking for 60, 61, maybe 62 seconds per lap. They probably feel comfortable and they'll set them up for about 350, 1500 metres. So as we see it, Williams, Barrett, Bibley, 
Rogers, McMinnie, the boys from Bendigo, Harrison Boyd and Matthew Buckle, and Sam Bunnage. And they're about your first eight in the field so far. And they're all running pretty smartly, tucking in behind the person in front of them. And we've got two very credentialed paces in Lockie Heard and Andre Waring leading the boys around. So going through that first two laps in two minutes. So that's 3.45 pace that they are running at. Let's see who can hang on over these final two laps. Or so, should I say 700 metres. Remy Williams still hanging strong. Isaac Bibley impressing me in third position there. Charles Barrett. The athlete from Essendon sitting in second. So Williams, Barrett, Bibley, Buckle, Rogers, Boyd, McMinnie, Bunnage. They are your first eight as the train rolls around the track, almost looking, making it look like a training session out there. But it definitely looks like the last rep of eight 1Kers as they collect the bell with one lap to go. It's 2.48 and they're close. Whew. Whatever they close in, it's going to be impressive time. Buckle gets right up on the heels of Bibley. Bibley gets up on the shoulder of Barrett. Everyone's dragging everyone along for the party. Wearing, is he going to stay on? Is he going to step off the track? Give him a bit of space. He's going to pull him through for a little bit longer. Williams, Harrison Boyd gets up and passes three or four athletes all at once, including Williams almost. Williams just gets the best of him as he goes around the bend. They round the discus cage for that last time. Williams, he's done a lot of the hard work, and he's going to charge away from Boyd. And we see a train of athletes, Bibley, Barrett, Buckle, Bunnage. They're all there, but it is Remy Williams' night. Is he going to head for 2.45? This will be a huge time if he does. 43, 44, 45, unreal. 47, 48, and the... Train of athletes coming through. Boyd and Dale Carroll was that second place there. Unreal racing to close out the night of Miles Club Racing. A record-breaking night. The most races, the most athletes that we've ever had on a Victorian Miles Club program. And I cannot believe the number of PBs. I reckon if you sort of sifted through the data you'd probably find that it was the most PBs, the most C times that you ever got on one night of Miles Club. It seemed that everyone broke the C times by about two, three, four, ten seconds. But Remy Williams, 3.45, in a PB of ten seconds there. So many athletes under 3.50 for the first time. Well, thank you for watching another night of Milers Club Racing. As we said, record-breaking night. Lots of people leaving. Very, very happy tonight. Um, we'll see you back for another Milers Club meet in January. So you'll see all the information via our socials, via Athletics Exclusive, and via Victorian Milers Club, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. So we'll see you at the next one. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Two oh eight and Rich. Four one forty five as it counts down. One forty seven has crossed the line and clicked. Wow. He's showing us why. And look at the clock. One forty four, one forty five as it counts down. One forty seven has crossed the line and clicked. Wow. Towards the finish line. Huge run by Mitchell. 4.27, tight to Dave Blake. Towards the finish line. Huge run by Mitchell. 4.27, tight to Dave Blake. Just shy of a PB. 3.42, Clifford. Oh, Riley Bright. Huge run from Riley Bright. Third, just shy of a PB.
Dice, 